I'm Katie Osborne for Truck Hero, and it's been so much fun hanging out with you this week at the, SEMA, the 2018 SEMA Show in Las Vegas. Of course, Truck Hero loves all vehicles, and we want to make sure you get a chance to enjoy the SEMA Cruise. Yeah, and in fact, the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational Vehicles helped start the SEMA Cruise because people were starting to wonder, are SEMA cars real cars? Do they actually run and drive? So Optima batteries threw down the gauntlet and they said, hey, let's find out if anybody has what it takes to build a, a SEMA caliber car and then bring it out to race right after the show. So that was a few years ago and today we're seeing this event grow and grow. They've got all kinds of uh, events around the country to help qualify to get these cars here. There's also a handful of golden ticket winners of people that were uh, given a, an expense paid trip here to the SEMA Cruise and the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. These are uh, real cars that bring a, a, a competition level to the SEMA show. We wish all of these drivers good luck and, uh, and hope they have a, a, a safe but fast weekend racing at the Optima Streetcar Challenge. You know, Kent, the popularity of the Optima Street Streetcar Invitational has grown so much over these last few years. I remember when they first launched this program, there may have been a couple dozen cars, and I believe it's over 100 and change now. And it, it's brought a certain caliber of builder, driver, and team to the SEMA show. And to, to see these guys, and if you look at their faces, the fun is just beginning for them. And like you, I wish those guys the best this weekend. I want to congratulate Cam and all his group over at Optima for doing a great job. They're doing a great job, and it's not just late model stuff like we're seeing. We've got uh, muscle cars. We've got some vintage uh, import stuff. We've got about a 66 Ford Fairlane right there coming through. Behind it, a split bumper Camaro and a Miata. They set this competition so that all these cars can compete against each other with some kind of parity at the Optima Streetcar Challenge. That little Miata's nasty sounding, that's all I'm gonna say. As tempting as it is to want to just reach in and talk to everybody, we try to keep it fluid. There's so, so many cars, so selectively we'll pull over some folks. All right. All right, folks. The Optima Streetcar Ultimate Invitational is making it. Well, here's the through. face that many folks are familiar with here. Hey, anybody want to say hi to Jay Leno? Welcome to the SEMA Show. Jay, how are you? Hey, thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Leno. Very cool. Great show this year. Well, we, we brought Kevin Oste on board, so hopefully we're going to kick it up a level. Jay, how are things with you? How was the show? You've been in enough of these shows. Uh, did you? A lot of real excitement. I love that uh, that new Elephant motor from Chrysler. This is the new Lincoln. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of great stuff. The Mustangs look great. Uh, the, tell us, when can uh, folks see a little bit more about what's happening with you on television? Uh, well, we, we just started shooting our new season, uh, so it'll be on again in the spring. But the YouTube show is on every week. So. I love the show. I love what you do, a big Jay Leno fan. How about a nice SEMA cruise welcome to Jay Leno, everybody? Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Leno, Jay Leno's Garage, and Jay Leno's Garage Car Care Products, too, now, Joe. Don't forget about that. Uh, they were one of the more popular displays inside the Grand Lobby. I actually had an opportunity to sample some of that stuff before. Great job. I thought that was your new cologne, boy. I must admit, though, when I watched that episode when they flipped that Mopar, I was a little afraid, Ken. We were all a little afraid, but everything came out okay. That was excellent television, though. That certainly was. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the big Lincoln has your friend and mine, Mr. Jay Leno, on board. And he's driving with no hands. <laughs> yeah, he's getting your picture for a change. Right on. Once again, the parade of the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. Kevin, you would have died listening to me try to say that eight o'clock in the morning oh boy i can tell the great thing now is they put the uh, cue card right on the door they got a big sticker there and now you can read it right off i was creating my note my own name by the time the day was over <laughs> well it's about the only race out there at a, at a road course event where you're going to see you know spare lanes versus mazda miatas versus four-door twin turbocharged v8 mercedes-benz versus viper i mean it, it's incredible 
And it seems like it's a family affair too. You'll notice that everybody's either got their uh, friend or their wife or brother riding shotgun. This uh, Optima event really is kind of a family deal as well, it looks like. Oh, it sure is. It's a chance for, uh, for families. It's also a chance for professionals to get involved in professional shops. Uh, our friends coming by from Detroit Speed with their third generation Camaro, the blue car there, revving it up for us. Detroit Speed has come up with a whole new line of parts for those cars because uh, they handled good from the factory, but not like that one. Pony, the pony cars continue to be popular at the SEMA show over the years, Kev. There's nothing better than hearing the sound of a Mustang GT going by. Yeah, that Ford 5.0 Coyote motor definitely has a unique sound, and especially the Shelby version with that flat plane crank, man. When one of those things winds up, you know it. One of my all-time favorite cars, the Buick Grand National. Uh, looking forward to seeing the increased popularity of the G-Body platform, the Grand National, the Monte Carlo, even the Pontiac and the Hearst Oldsmobile and the 442s. These are great, great cars. Let's see real fast if this one, uh, ask him if th that's still a six cylinder. Ask him if it's still a turbo six. Still keeping it turbo six? Yes, it is. All right, so ask me, what did I do? Instead of buying the Buick, I buy the Monte Carlo SS with the anemic 305. <laughs> and you lost a lot of I'm that guy, instead of being <laughs> that guy. Still a cool car, Joe. I also have some other stories about those Buicks. You know, Reggie Jackson was a huge, huge, huge car collector. And at the time, when those GNX were coming out, I think that Trans Am also had that same engine in there, if the I recall. 89 Trans Am GTA did. Reggie bought like 60 of them and put them all in a warehouse up in uh, Northern California. And unfortunately, it burnt down. But I knew those GNX and those Buicks were going to come back. Now we got some rolling big power. A big, How about a nice... Rolling Big Power applause for our sponsor, the SEMA Cruise. Rolling Big Power. Yeah, let's hear it for Rolling Big Power. All your truck guys had to sit through all that first line of performance race cars going by. Now we're going to start seeing some big trucks. And these are being built to higher and higher quality levels every single year. Thanks for bringing them out, guys. We really appreciate it. And Kev, I particularly want to thank this large group of Rolling Big Power. This guy's a good example. He was waiting hours on end not only in line, but these things suck up gas, right? God knows how much money he was spending as he was waiting in line to get the vehicles moved in. And because they're so big, it's like a lifesaver roll. You have to kind of put them in a certain spot. And they waited patiently. And so did the sponsors. So not only do we appreciate all the effort of the sponsors, that's easy, they just write a check. These guys actually have to kind of do the deal. So thank you. And once again, a nice big round of applause for all our RBP participants as they make their way through the SEMA Cruise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in addition to uh, the cool cars and trucks coming through, uh, our friend Andy here has given us a couple of hats that we're going to give away. We're going to throw these out to the crowd. Uh, but what we want to do, we're going to do one on this side, we're going to do one on the other side. These are brand new SEMA 2018 hats. These are super, super cool. But what we're looking for is uh, a giant photograph of everybody reaching up and going crazy. But let's do this safely, right? Right? We don't, you know, want uh, people falling all over each other. So on the count of three, I'm going to toss this hat out, and I wish somebody uh, catches this thing safely. A very cool seat. The super shark. Are you ready, buddy? Here it comes. On one. On two. On three. Here it goes. Yay! That never quite There's works. Yep, 100 people down. and it hits the floor. Love it. Nice job, guys. Let's go to the other side. Let's come up here a little bit. License plate on it. Ready? On one, on two, on three. Here it goes. <laughs> Be careful, folks. Thank you for coming. Here they come. They're still coming, Kim. Well, somehow a roadster got stuck between all these trucks. I got to figure out who the hell this guy is, Kim. Probably somebody that you know. So just when you think people run out of ideas of vehicles to customize and modify, here comes a guy with a giant off-road golf cart, which we've seen off-road golf carts before. Look at the seats on that thing. That looks like a place you want to kick back and relax for a while and get a sky view down to your uh, golfing adventure, no doubt. I think that guy just saw too many Grinch movies, personally. Oh, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, oh, whoa. 
Sorry about that. Don't tell the wife. All right. And then this guy. How the hell did you get in the middle of a bunch of trucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you want to show off. Give it up for our Ford Roadster. Looking good, guys. As our trucks come rolling through, Joe's looking up there. We got some hot rods coming through. Oh, they're coming, Kev. What's this, a little low rim? What do we got here? See? Love it. There you go. And you don't have to worry about the other 20 cars around you being the same, right? Give it up for our Jeep fans. We got some Jeeps coming through in red, white, and blue. All right, Kev, I'm jealous of this Corvette guy. He's got a really nice car. He looks like some movie star. Hey, but before we get to that, Joe, I need to take a look at this Riviera that's rolling down here. Bring this thing over here for a sec, pal. I knew you were going to love that yeah, one. Yeah, you knew it. You knew it. Sure. Park that thing right over here. So, friends, what we are looking at here is a 1965 Buick Riviera. But this is not a stock 65 year now. You'll notice it's sitting on the ground. <laughs> no. So tell me a little bit about the car. It's a 65 Riviera on a Roadster Shop chassis. It's got a 1,000 horse LS, uh, Bosch ABS. So he says that casually. Oh, you know, it's got a roadstop. It's got a 1,000 horsepower, friends. And listen to this thing. You, you can't even hear it. 1,000 horsepower because of a supercharged LS9 engine. Tell us who you are and what you had to do with it. I'm Matt from Sled Alley Hot Rods and Cruiser. Matt, you did an awesome job on this car. Thanks for bringing it out. It belongs to our good friend, Charlie. I'm envious. I want to drive that thing. This car has already been driven over 3,000 miles across the country on the Good Guys uh, Legends Tour. Love to see the ones that get driven. Love to see the oddball cars that don't get the love. Cool to see the rib. All right, Kevin, next thing you're going to try to buy the car. Let the Riviera go. We got a cruise. We got no, no setting up future purchases, Kevin. You know me, Joe. I couldn't afford six inches of that car. All right, so a lot of our sponsors like to give items out, like hats and t-shirts, but they're just not that smart. It's like a 30-foot toss to get to you. So if you do have some items, I'll grab them. We'll make sure that everybody gets a little love. What we're worried about is somebody coming into the traffic. So sponsors, if you have some items that you like to give away, just be mindful of the fact that it's, it's kind of tough when you throw them a t-shirt and it's on the other side of a road where there's moving traffic, right? Right now, we got to keep it safe, and especially, like we said, we throw the stuff up in the stands. Uh, no need to uh, get hurt diving too far. We appreciate the, uh, the effort and the enthusiasm. Uh, I see a 32 Ford uh, little roadster sitting here. Sir, your name? My name is Paul Truex from Cruise Customs. Paul, tell me, what color is this? This is a 1932 Ford Roadster. What color? It's a crystal blue metallic. Crystal blue metallic, I love it. You still got the hairpin front. That's that Corvette telling me what he thinks of that Roadster. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, we're going to keep it rolling. Another Optima car coming through and a, a beautiful Ford Torino. This one uh, built by our buddy Randy at DZ Customs. It's a 69 Mercury Cyclone we built for Optima Jim. He's 7 foot 1, I'm 5 10. We're close. Haha, <laughs> yeah, so Randy behind the wheel is 5'10". The guy that owns this car is seven feet, one inches tall. So if he looks like he's lost in there, he really is. But an awesome, awesome car. Mercury Cyclone, I call it a Torino, but it's actually a Cyclone. One of those things you don't see every day. Kev, I have a little trivia about Optima Jim. Did you know that Optima Jim played in the NBA? At seven foot one, are you kidding me? I'd never believe that. So I slam dunked on him during feature vehicle moving? That I believe. All right. Joe, you slam dunked on everybody at some point. Well, they keep on coming, Kev. Every once in a while, some guy is a first time exhibitor gets stuck in this traffic. So I can't wait for the first Hertz rental car to come through. <laughs> well, you know, they're all special in their own way. This one's not. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking the big Freightliner, though. Hey. How's it going, buddy? He's a... Uh...
seven, eight, or nine Camaro that was never technically offered. And that's why that continuation car is so cool today, Joe. Thanks for asking. Who the hell is this guy? I don't know, but having fun on two wheels of the show. Christ, it looks like the guy that worked for me showing up late for work. Get, get back up, get back to work. All right, then we got to push you, Kev. Oh, come on now, help them out. Hey, they, they might have a pusher, but when hey, this thing lights off, drive. you better get out of the way, because it Just looks bad. Just get your little ass out of that car and help her. Let, her. let her drive, you push, right? All right, I know you got slowed down by a pusher. Story of my life. That's one of the factory five hyper cars, man. How you doing, brother? They might be pushing it now, but when it goes, it's gone. Kev, I saw my first, uh, well, maybe my second javelin at the show. I, I think there may have been three javelins. Did you see them? I saw at least one. Javelins are cool. I saw one guy get really mad. He had a really nice Nova, and a guy said, hey, nice duster. Yeah, that'll oh, do it. Oh, they hate that'll, that. That'll do it. Oh, they hate that. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at the faded paint job on this 69 Chevelle that's rolling by. That is, uh, goes from kind of a, a, a lighter cranberry down to almost black. It's, it's, it's not an illusion. That is a, a faded paint job. It looks dynamite. Kev, I'm seeing a ghost. It's Mask from UFC. He's relived. He's back. Yeah, stranger things have happened here at the SEMA Cruise. Son of a... We have another contender in the train horn nationals, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause for our friend of the big Hot F-250. We didn't know. Oh, now we got you. Here we are. Okay, if you tell the next guy that blast that horn, Tom Catuso. Hey, here's the deal with the horns. It's scary. I didn't get a heart attack, man. I'm 60 years old. That's just not funny. It's all in the name of safety. You want to make sure there's nobody in front of them. Now, I like everything about this Chevy pickup, Kev. Yeah? Yeah, I saw my 51, which wasn't quite as cool as that one, and I want it back, especially that, when I see ones like that. It's very cool. There's a lot of neat stuff coming up. This uh, Corvette here has this mystical color of, of metallic satin green. What color is it? The color I'd never put on my car. It's real chrome turquoise. Satin chrome turquoise Corvette, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. That, I know, is not one of the colors that Chevrolet offers. That is a full custom deal. And you're right, that truck is killer. Kev? Kev? Yeah. We got a bleeder. Uh-oh. What do we got, Joe? He put his steering wheel on the wrong side. Oh, man, again? Damn Australians, I tell you. You know what's fun about that? It makes it easier for me to talk to the driver. So uh, I appreciate him building this custom vehicle uh, for me here. So this is interesting because uh, this is a, a Holden Ute of some sort. That's correct. It's a 2010 Holden Commodore SSU. The cool thing about these is here in the United States, we saw this platform being used with the GA, uh, the Chevy uh, Caprice police car version, but you've had these down there for quite a while. Yeah, it's several years. It runs as, as what you would have here in, in the PPVs or by Chevy SS. So I'm gathering that you're not from here. Definitely not. I'm from down under. So did you bring this vehicle and yourself just for the SEMA show, or are you uh, here in Vegas you know, throwing some dice and a car show broke out? I'm not much of a gambler, but we did bring it all the way from Australia. We left six weeks ago, and uh, it did uh, 4,000 kilometers on the road and 15,000 kilometers on the water before it made it all the way down here. Unbelievable. Your name? Stuart. Stuart, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Stuart and his Holden Ute LS powered all the way from Australia just to come see you folks here today. That's the whole reason why he came is to be part of the SEMA show and this event, and we really appreciate that. Well, he's no Steve Irwin. We got a, out, a table at Outback waiting for you. Come on, let's go. Don't make any blooming onion jokes, Joe. Christ, you had two cylinders in that car, Ken. You got guys with 20 cylinder cars we could be talking to. He put his steering wheel on the wrong side. Look at this, selfies. Joe, we've got a killer green custom bubble top Impala coming your way. Yes. Uh, got a fast sticker in the window. That means, uh, I'm guessing, a fuel-injected motor. What do you got in this? LS3. 
It sounds great. It sounds a little high strung like it wants to go. Oh, she wants to run about 700 horse. 700 horsepower. Thanks for bringing it out. That's a, another great color. I dig the two-tone with the painted trim. Following that is another square-bodied Chevy GMC pickup truck. This has the paint scheme from the Indy 500. Tell me about it. It was the Indy uh, Hall or 1975. And uh, was this a special edition truck? I mean, how many of these things did they make? And we'll just kind of walk and talk. They made uh, 27 of them in 1975. Three of them were long bed uh, regular cabs. This one is supercharged. Yeah, I can hear it under there. It sounds a little angry under the hood. I love it. Thanks for bringing it out, man. Thank you. Hey, Kevin, another vehicle that I ultimately screwed up on, that square body pickup truck. Guess what model I got? What'd you get, Chuck? The long bed. Yeah. Guess what color mine was? Brown. Peach. Oh, even better. <laughs> All right. All, All right, right, ladies and gentlemen, the queen has arrived. Head up there and talk with Doug and Joe. Well, come on up here, Miss Swamp Woman Mark, USA. Mark over there, Joe's gonna talk. Now, I saw you guys when uh, you were checking in. Come over here a little bit. Uh-oh, I, I know it. Well, that's what happens. Fire it up. Oh, you gotta dig it. He's got the microphone as a shifter. Looking good. Don't talk into it. So how the hell did you get talked into this? I, I'm the budget. What's your name? I'm the budget. He's the builder. He's the builder? This guy, crazy. How do you, where did he get, how much time did he spend building this vehicle? A lot of time. A lot of your money? Yes. But was it worth it? Did you have a good time? Yes, I did. It was very much worth it. Hey, uh, come on, walk through us a little bit. I didn't know we had a, a queen of SEMA here this year. But Kevin did a pretty good job on this thing. When you take a look at it, he wasn't fooling around. What other vehicles do you have in the stable? In this one? No, what other vehicles do you have besides this? A 27 Roadster and a 29 Ford truck. Now, where are you from? Louisiana. Louisiana. Well, thank you for coming out. And you know what? That looks like it's from Louisiana. You did a really good job representing your state. Thank you for coming out, brother. That's going to be a nice long... round of applause from our friends from Louisiana. It's going to be a long drive back in that one. Well, the back of it's full with Crown Royal, Kevin. Oh, well, then it'll be a fun drive back. Shut it, better on the next. Let's make sure it's a safe drive back. We've got more variety coming your way, Joe. We've got a couple of more big trucks. We've got. Uh, a highly supercharged fastback Mustang coming up. This thing's got that alcohol burning idle to it where it kind of revs itself up and pushes itself along because it wants to be on a drag strip, essentially. Just like that. Yeah, this looks like a crocodile getting ready to kill something. Yeah, and coming up, we've got an awesome Jeep. I'm going to see a, a short bed honcho pickup. Tell me about it. 82J10. Project, and we brought it out to show it for you, Taylor Sprayer. Now these things are also starting to get real popular. We appreciate you bringing out, did a great job with it. Hey Kevin, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our sponsors for the SEMA Cruise. Obviously we couldn't do without the help from our friends at Rolling Big Power, Mother's Waxes and Polishes, the Shell Oil Company, and so Performance Lighting. Our friends from Hot Wheels are celebrating their 50th anniversary. Thank God all this stuff's on the wall, so I have to remember it. And our friends from Kia, all sponsors of the SEMA Cruise. How about a nice round of applause for all of our sponsors, everybody? Thank you. Yeah, thanks to our sponsors. I just realized all their logos are up there on the wall, Joe. Did you see that? I did. Nothing gets by me. That's what I'm talking about, a Cobra Jet Mustang in full drag race trim. You see that Rice and Holman name on there. Vintage speed stickers, the Craig R wheels, the Jardine exhaust. Seamus not just about new parts, they've got some old parts as well. And if you want to see a crazy Mustang, there's one coming up next. This thing has been modified every way possible. Uh, 
and uh, I'm gonna let him tell you what's under the hood because you're not gonna believe me. Tell me about the engine. It's a Ferrari F430. Did you hear that? It's a Ferrari powered Mustang, ladies and gentlemen. Listen. That is fantastic. I'm not gonna ask how you end up with just the 430 engine, you know, if you maybe rolled the Ferrari, uh, even the Ferraris that get rolled get fixed. So there's another mystery right there, but that that's a cool car. Hey, Kev, get this guy. Put a helmet on him, but before you ever watch out. We're, we're gonna chat with you for a sec. Yeah, that guy's got like six nitrous express bottles. Be careful over there. Yeah, th this is crazy. Let's hear it for the diesel power. Oh. Get a snort of that, Kev. Get yeah, so what did this thing start off at? What's that? What did this start off as? This started off as a bunch of bored men playing with diesels in Montana. Ah, Big Sky Country. And you're trying to turn that whole Big Sky black with diesel smoke. Totally, yeah. I mean, it's kind of a not good product of it, but that's what happens when you make power. Right on, man. Well, thanks for bringing it up. That thing's insane. I ain't mad with that, Kev. He's okay. He can pour out the diesel. Followed by a Grand Wagoneer that looks like it rolled off the showroom floor. What's going on with this thing? Oh, he says it's completely restored. You did a phenomenal job on this thing. Thank you so much for bringing it out. Kev, somebody's lost. Who's that? Ah, uh, you'll know. It's coming through. <laughs> he got lost. Somebody hey, it's home of the world's fastest sidecar, the Guthrie Levy Racing. <laughs> You're still lost. Keep going. Ladies and gentlemen, this says blasphemy. This is Mike Finnegan's 55 Chevy. You know Mike from Roadkill. That one was on display here this week at SEMA. Hey, did you see F-Bomb? That was on display at the Holly Booth Twin Turbo Monster Freiburger Creation. You're going to love this next one, Kev. Coming your way. I love them all, Joe. Original patina, little Buick action. A very fine 59. These guys are saying, yeah, they told me to go back there where I could load my car in my trailer and go home. And look what happened here, right, in the SEMA cruise. Ask him who told them that, Kev. Uh, it certainly wasn't Joe. Oh. It got to be some point, I would just tell anybody, just go up there and make a right. It was Joe? <laughs> just make a right. Just go up to the light and make a right. Well, here's the deal, you know, many people have come a long, long distance in unassuming looking pickup trucks and whited out trailers. And the fun thing is, you never know what's inside that trailer until it gets unloaded here at the SEMA show. I know what's inside every one of those trailers, Ken. You do, Joe, because you helped unload all those cars and get them in the show. And you're right, this 59 Buick Invicta, I love it. I knew it would. I knew you would, Kev. Got a great stance, great wheels. Let me ask a quick question. You gotta keep moving though, keep driving. So does this thing still have a nail head under the hood or did you change it up? So 364, 401? 401 original nail head Buick V8 under the hood of this thing. Definitely, definitely not the original suspension unless he's got like 27 kegs of beer. But that would fit back there to bring that thing down that low. Oh, Joe, you had me nervous for a second there. I see the uh, the Weston pickup truck with all the lights on. I thought you were getting us in trouble once again. No, I talked my way out of that. I'm good. I'm actually making my way. It's unbelievable, kid. There used to be about 3,000 people lined up on the, what would it be, the north side of the South Hall. I Not only can I not see the end of the line of the people, I can't see the end of the line of the cars. So hopefully we're getting overtime. Are we getting paid overtime? Uh... So, look at these cars, Joe. I know your wife's your agent, so I'm sure you're getting paid. My guy, my guy's a stiff. I'm probably, I'm probably gonna lose money on this deal. Here they come, another pusher. Oh, see, yeah, the, well, he's got the cool paint job. Let me get over here and find out who the hell this is. Joe, you raised a good point, not being able to see the end of the line oh, here. Okay, <laughs> Casey, hey, so I'm here with my man. This is Casey's, <laughs> Casey Scranton with CGS, okay, one of the, Probably one of the hottest up and coming vehicle builders, works with all the OEs, gets all these cars, works on them, makes them gorgeous, and the idiot runs out of gas. <laughs> What's happening, Casey? 
Oh, nice, Joe. They tell us that we can only have a little bit of gas, but we need more gas to get out the, the show. You're full of gas, Casey. All right, he still let's, does a good job. That's a nice Mustang. Let's give it up for the one guy pushing. We feel your pain, brother. Keep it going, my there friend. There you go. Kev, if you want to help him, man, you I'm can really give him a hand because my microphone runs up range back here and they can't hear me, but they probably don't really care that they can't hear me. So take it away, Jim. Oh, no, I'm done. All right, Kev, I'm going to make my way up here. This is like, again, this continues to be really the calm before the storm. This ain't nothing. This ain't nothing, buddy. You would not see the end of the line of cars, so I hope you are comfortable. Well, Kev, you were a Bronco fan. I think we got another one making its way towards you. Yep, I bet he's from the south. Call me crazy. All right, then. Next. No, it's all good fun. Everybody having a good time? Everybody going to roll over to the uh, Platinum Lot for the big Seema Ignited. Get to hang out with all the Battle of the Builders. Once again, a big welcome and thank you to all of our media. Let's find out where some of these, these guys could be imposters, Kevin. Anybody could buy one of these cheap vests at Kmart. Yeah, and we didn't even think about it. You know you could get the credentials maybe on Craigslist. Like, Phil, are you really a photographer? Yes, I am. Where are you from? Minnesota. Minnesota? How's the car culture out there? I used to like going to all those car shows in, uh, where was it? Uh, Minnesota State Fairgrounds? Back to the 50s, every year. Back to the 50s, great event. So you're legit. You're going to stay put. This guy, Brian. Brian, where are you from? Yo. What, what media are you representing? Garage Asylum. I see that. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it's a social media platform, a lot of racing and cool shows like SEMA. Pretty nice to come to the SEMA show and get a couple of weeks, days, or months of fodder, isn't it? Exactly. All right, you have a good time. Thank you, our media. How about you, young man? Wait a minute, you could be older than me. What's your name? Dan. Where are you from, Dan? Bay Area. Bay Area. What, what media are you representing? Uh, import Image. Import Image. Seeing a lot of nice imports? Definitely, definitely. Did you know that Peter McGillivray, our head guy here at SEMA, actually was a part of the crew that started Super Street Magazine? Oh, there you go. Yes, that's, he did. Uh, he's true, done Jim. a lot, right? Yeah. Hey, listen, I made it back. I helped them push the Mustang all the way to the end over there. I see. But yeah. The, that keeps so, getting heavier the longer it goes, I'll tell you right now. You're a good person, Kevin, and people like you. I've just been there, my friend. You know, on the Hot Rod Power Tour one year, I helped a guy push a Nova up Vegas Boulevard the whole way. Well, you're not that smart, Kev. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and he had plenty of gas, he just didn't start. You're a giver. And you're either a giver or you're not a giver. That's right. Excellent job of wrapping this American Forest Graphic Ford pickup truck. Carrying some more personal craft on the back of a super slick black 69 Camaro. Rolling on forge lines. Kev, I'm spotting a lease vehicle. I'm spotting a lease vehicle. Warning, warning. You know, they wondered about the change of venue, if the, how it was gonna affect things. I think this is our biggest crowd ever. Thanks everybody for coming. You're a big part of the SEMA cruise. We love having everybody out here. All right, here it comes, kid. Yep. What do you think, guys? Please? Please? All right. Just saying. Check his watch. Check his watch and his shoes. I guarantee it's least. Least. <laughs> Didn't you have one of those? You had something similar. I certainly did. Thank you. Not many oh, people you know, know that I was a professional baseball player. And at that time, I was making a lot of money, and I wasted it all on expensive cars. That's what you do, buddy. Beautiful Corvette Roadster. And the flat nose cab over rolling through. Kev, don't get out of line with these two guys. I mean, just be nice. Wave them on. Don't look directly in their eyes. Just let them go straight. I know nothing. All good. I think it's another one. But there's nothing wrong with that. Joe, is it true that uh, before you started your illustrious career in the automotive media world with Peterson Publishing, you were discovered working uh, as a doorman at a hotel in New York? Is that true? I beg your pardon? 
I was True. a bellman, not a doorman. Ah, excellent. I was actually a luggage technician. Luggage, <laughs> a man of the people. Our friend Joe, ladies and gentlemen. I was fun. All the big shots. I worked at a little place called the Daytona Hilton in Daytona, and uh, didn't realize that I was in the mecca. Hey, I'm in the middle of a story over here. Anyways, I would be in Daytona, and they would have the Daytona 500, and all the motorcycle events, and the firecracker events, and all the big shots stayed at our hotel. And my job was to find all their rental cars that they left on the beach when they got drunk. My job was to help them get in and out of the track. And one of them, one of the clients was dumb enough to hire me as a bellman from the Hilton. I went to work at Hot Rod Magazine. And the rest they say, Kevin, is all downhill. Sure was, man. One of my favorite cars of all time is coming up. A lot of people make fun of the Edsel, but not my buddy Bobby Alloway. This is a 58 Edsel and it is super super slick it's got an awesome fuel injected late model ford engine and of course a manual transmission and it's driven by our friend rick love from vintage air we're gonna we're gonna bother rick so you've all heard of vintage air the uh, company that makes the air conditioning systems for hot rods muscle cars how did you get a chance to drive bobby's uh, edsel well i was the cheapest driver he could find <laughs> and somebody he obviously trusts there, I guess there's that too. So does this thing drive as nice as it looks? It really does. It's got an art horse and frame, and we got the air and all of that. I mean, it drives like a new car. It really does. Engine, Coyote engine, and Trebek five speed. So I mean, it really, it's like driving a new car. Maybe it's got vintage air. You bet. So I tell you what, if Edsel's rolled out of the factory looking like this, they'd still be in business today. What, that's, isn't that the truth? That sure is. Thanks, Rick. Good to see you. Thanks for bringing it out. And we've got a message for all of our friends on foot traffic over here that are walking uh, close to the South Hall. Uh, if you continue around, there is an opportunity to walk around that other set of bleachers and there's a mid gate where you can get out over there. I was told by, uh, by the show management. So we've got people kind of stacking up. If you're looking to get out, there is a way out to go around the back. Hey Kev. Yes sir. Do we get paid extra if we really enunciate these PA spots? Enunciate them properly, or what do you mean? Well, I'm wondering if I really boost up this spot, if I can get free tickets to like a Meekum auction. Go for it. Give it a shot. Hey, any Meekum auction fans? Yeah, Meekum auctions, definitely. I like Meekum because, like, it's halfway realistic, right? As far as what the cars sell for, you mean? Yeah. Um, you know, Meekum is kind of like the average guy's auction, wouldn't you say? Uh... Love what they do. I, I kind of feel comfortable with the prices. I like the cars. I like what they do. I like the big chubby guy. I think what's super fun about going to a Meekum auction is even if you're not there to buy or sell, it's an awesome, awesome car show. Just be careful, you might get the bug. Pretty soon you'll be bidden. Well, I can't go to any of them anymore. Thank you, because I went once and had a big problem. But I would suggest everybody check out Meekum. It's the world's largest collection of car auction company with over 18 auctions this year. You can check out their schedule for upcoming auctions near you to get the full Meekum experience at Meekum.com. Once again, Meekum, the world's largest collector car auction company. You can check out their complete schedule for upcoming events and auctions near you and get the full Meekum experience at Meekum.com. How the hell was that? That was great. You know, I'll add a little bit to that. If you go to the Meekum.com website, you can join what's called the Meekum InfoNet the InfoNet, it's a free uh, service. You? And if you go and join the InfoNet, you can go back in time and look at all the previous auctions and see what the cars sold for. They show the price. If you don't register, they don't show you the price. So Kim, I think I'm dreaming. I'm on a beach, I've got a Corvette, I've got a girl on the side, I got one on the top. I got, a, I got more gas than Casey did. And then I wake up, Kevin, I hate it. You're not dreaming, you're at the SEMA cruise, buddy. I am. How are you? Are you dreaming about being on the beach in a truck with a girl on top? Yes. There you go, man. And a few other things. All right, we got, we got some hat launchers. These are the ones that cause the problems, Kevin. <laughs> I say, look, start throwing out product. Then some guys start throwing out shocks. 
you lost a few, so it got ugly quick. Oh boy. You know, so you gotta watch it. All right, Kev, we have what we could describe moderately. We'll just call this a support vehicle. How you guys doing? 6.3 cam, what a great job. Damn, listen to that thing rev up, holy cow. Hey, so even just show up with one luxury Mercedes wagon, he showed up with a dozen of them. When Optima does it, they do it right. All kidding aside, Kim, thank you so much for what you guys did. Have a great upcoming event. It's the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. They do a great job. I love having those guys around. They gave out batteries to all of our exhibitors, and they did not fool around. Optima Batteries, thank you so much, Kim, for all you do. All right. Oh, yeah. This is looking nice. And, Kev. Yeah. This is available in the new Sears catalog. It is. It certainly is. The uh, the, the Tron uh, cycle is available in the new Sears catalog. It's great to know. See? Here comes a Ford Talladega. This is an extended nose version of the Torino, and this was done to increase the aerodynamics on the super speedways of NASCAR racing in 1969-1970. The fun thing is that the hot NASCAR engine was the, uh, the Boss 429 engine, and Ford made a car called the Boss 429 Mustang, but that Mustang never raced in NASCAR, but they used that car to make that engine legal to run in cars like this Torino Talladega right here, and that one is awesome. Look at the size of the tires on the back of that thing. And another kid that's a Ricky Bobby's favorite car as well. That sure is. You haven't seen a black paint job recently that looks like this one on this radically altered Dodge Charger coming through with the red wheels. And the fun thing about SEMA, it's backed up by what appears to be a perfectly looking stock Shelby GT350 right behind it. No, they said you gotta wear it. Another one of the great looking trucks here on display at SEMA. We've got another big Ram. I got a quick question. You've got some beautiful airbrush graphics on the side. We've got a wolf, we've got a skull, we've got some women, we've got a woman with a skull. Are these any people you know or are these random people? Well, it's not my truck, it's his truck, so I'll have to ask him. We'll ask him, I can't reach him. Yeah. All right, I didn't know if it was, you know, Special people in your life immortalized in airbrush graphics. Beautiful truck. Kev, I have a new favorite. Oh, yeah? I've got a new favorite. What do you got? You'll see it, believe me. Coming your way, baby. The Jeep with the red, silver, and gray digital street camo? Uh, not so much that one. I think it's cool. Oh, oh you cool. must be talking about the Charger. The Charger, yes I am, Kev. Deep down, I'm a Mopar guy. Damn it, I'm gonna just say it. The Minecraft Jeep, that's it. How you doing? So nice bring, this, bring this one over here. Nice Let's dog. take a look at this green Charger. This is a heck of a car. Uh, almost uh, one of the stock Mopar colors for the year. It's all right. What's that? I'll talk to you on the other side. Hold on a sec, friends. We're taking a look at this Dodge Charger, and although this looks like a radical green, this almost appears to be one of the original color. Yeah, this is definitely not. It's a custom uh, in-house mix. It's actually a base coat, clear coat, so even though it appears candy, it is definitely not a candy. You can touch it up, but it'll candy as you drive. The paint's amazing. It sure is. The whole car's amazing. I'm seeing a whole late model dash, and I'm guessing there's a, a late model driveline. Oh yeah, full Hellcat, everything. Hellcat, down to the T. This is what if you want to got a Hellcat out of the factory, every option, everything. Motors beefed up, about 825 horsepower. Runs and drives like a new Hellcat. Looks like a '69 Charger. Did a heck of a job, man. Congratulations. Thanks for bringing it out. Okay, I'm gonna take you back to the future pretty soon. I can see why you like that one, Joe. It's all coming back to me now, Kev. Dig the big LED sequential taillights on that one, too. When the taillights are that long on a car, you get mesmerized following them. But you won't follow him for long, because he's going to be out of here quickly with 800 horsepower. 
So Kev, I'm digging the old body styles with the new wave drivetrain. I'm talking about the A-body dusters with new heavy stuff inside of them. Oh yeah. I'm talking about that charger probably sitting on what, a brand new Chrysler platform? Yeah, it's all Hellcat. The dash is all contemporary up to date. Yep. All the creature comforts, but it's still got that badass look from back in the day. The best of all worlds, my friend. Here he is, Kev, back to the future. Yeah, we gotta be careful. Here he is. I don't think Rillo. I don't think anybody has ever achieved 88 miles an hour in the SEMA cruise, but if this guy does, look out, because he's going out of time. Big round of applause for the DeLorean DMC-12 was the model number. Stainless car, the DMC-12, kind of an interesting name for a car. It stands for DeLorean Motor Company, and the 12 was representative of $12,000, which is what they thought this was going to cost when it was new. Unfortunately, John DeLorean and his friends missed the mark quite a bit. They sold for about 23, 25 grand instead of 12. But it's nice to have a, a goal. And this guy's got his gull wing doors open and they're just cool cruising in that DeLorean. That sounds angry, Joe. You talk to him. Who ordered the popcorn? All right, slow down there. Now, I remember you, young man, when you were moving in feature vehicles. When was that? It seemed like a couple days ago. It seemed like maybe a year ago for you. Did you have a good show? Wait, what was that again? Sorry, I can't hear the crows loud. I know it. Uh, I was saying, I saw you a few days ago when you were moving into the show. It must have been a great week for you. Yeah, my first time ever coming to SEMA, first time having a car in SEMA. I really want to give a big thank you to NK and what monsters do. They really helped me put all this together. Congratulations on a nice job. Another one of our young new SEMA. Hold on, we'll hold the Trans Am up. Another one of our young guns representing the industry. Very I had an RX-7 at one time. Building up that boost pressure and shooting it off. Kev, he just, he just blew off the rear balance. This is want to tell him. I see that, yeah, yeah, I'll have to take that back on. It'll be fine. And tell Burt Reynolds he got the wrong air Trans Am when you see him, too. Ah, uh, looks like, what, about a 79? Yeah, is that anemic little, what they put in there? Yeah, it's not anemic anymore, Joe, because this know. one's got a, a 6.2 badge on that shit. Kev, tell that kid to stop before I come over there. Joe, Joe's gonna come over, but that felt kind of good. My shirt flew around. It's gonna be one less young gun next year. I can tell you that right now. Because the, the old gun's gonna get them. Let these kids take over here, I mean, come on. Find room for them, but they're not taking the main stage, right? Now here they come, Kev. Now he took a little bit of a, a new style, mixing it up with an old style, got the Screaming Eagle on there. Well, well yeah, you know, and, and he's got a, it sounds like with the 6.2 badge on that scoop, I'm guessing a form of an LS engine. Uh, these cars, they drove really nice. They handled very well when they were new, but of course now there are so many awesome suspension components to what I call feel like you take the weight out of the car because that second gen Firebird, it's kind of a heavy ride, but with the right things and suspension, duh, it'll rock. Kev, 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 the guy put the stickers on the car. It's not a 6.2 underneath there. You just put the stickers on there. Yeah. All right, it's big truck time. Little Joe, little... Joe, your buddy with the Mazda had a little issue. Yeah, why am I not surprised? Right? I swear. Tell them I'm going to give them a Pioneer head unit, though. Just keep things cool. Okay, so usually, Ken, by, by now someone's come up and said something like, good job, or you're, you're doing good. Isn't Joe doing a great job, ladies and gentlemen? Big round of applause for Joe's fishing for some compliments. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I'm sharing all that with you, Ken, because oh, you're thank actually you, the new guy. Hey, hey you know what? Everybody, let's have a round of applause for everybody that came out here today that's enjoying this tremendous event. What do you think? It's the SEMA Cruise 2018. Let's have some, All right, some action. Everybody. Let's have some noise. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, Kevin's buying dinner. Ah! That's it. Keep doing it. We have a saying in our shop. It's called, this is how we learn.
This is how we learn. She had the Mexican last night. <laughs> right on, man. So our friend here on the uh, Yamaha motorcycles on his way home from work. Welcome to the uh, SEMA parade. All right, Kev. I know patina is cool. Everybody loves it. Remember patina they, is cool. Before, when you get a vehicle with patina, they would sand it off and put on some glossy red. Yeah. Now, Kev, they're putting the patina on too. I think this is a mix. It looks really good. Did a really nice job. Cool GMC. There's a, uh, a technical term for that, Joe. It's called faux tina. There you go. Kind of like that outfit I had on. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't thinking about that, but I was, right. I was bringing back my inner Liberace, you know, I was in Vegas, I wanted to do the fur thing. But you know what's cool, it's an early GMC Suburban, it's not something you see every day, and uh, the, the shiny patina does look a little bit interesting, but you know, you clear it to protect it. Ford, I know, uh, a little Ford GT action? Yep. You may want to tell her that her head's sticking out of the door, if you see her, Kev? We've got an awesome F100. How you doing, brother? Great looking truck. Come out here. This is done by our friends at Classic Car Studio, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen the show Speed is in Black. Keep your eye on the show for that one. Just watch that. Followed by a Ford GT. I thought you were talking about the, the new orange, the new black. That's a stereo. Go watch here's, that. A, here's our friend John Wargo from the Custom Shop, bringing his multicolored. Kev, uh, representing Kev Poland. I think they got this mixed up. Ah, uh, you never know, man. Don't you uh, have the truck tow the... Sorry. What, what, what? I think he's demonstrating the pulling ability of that side by Oh, yeah. Hey, come on over here. The Hoonigan guys, what's happening? Everybody's talking about you guys. How was the show for you? It was great. I really want to thank everybody for coming out and seeing us act like fools. We can't wait to do it again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, BFG, Raceline King, and thank you, SEMA. Hey, tell us about the Hoonigan truck. Ah, this is our slam together Baja bug that in a week we will be going down and competing in the Baja. So right. come watch us make this thing fall apart. All right, man, one of the coolest rides out here, the Hoonigan bug. Check it out, guys. <laughs> Careful. Hey, any Vegas Rat Rod fans out there? Come on over here. Get out of the way, Kim. I got this one. Hey, buddy, it's all you. I'm a parlay. This is just a, a, a role on a TV show. You Come been... on over here, Steve. First of all, I hate this guy. You know why? He's on TV and he's good looking. He's got muscles. Come on over, Steve. Come over. All right, let me come over and check him out. What the hell is this? You never know what he's building. All right, turn it off, Steve. How about the star of Vegas Rat Rods, Steve Darnell? How about a nice round of applause? Everybody? Hey, Steve. Welcome aboard, buddy. So I was watching you work the room, but before we get into what's going on, tell us a little bit about this build. Uh, this is a 47 Federal with a twin turbo 12 Alp Cummins. Who wants to see my welder roll coal? Hey, you want to see the roll welder roll coal? Roll coal? Before we roll coal, let's let the uh, the Riddler winning Foos and Pala imposter go by because that's a heck of a car. Sometimes timing's out of control, but yes, folks, how about take a look at that awesome vehicle? That's a nice car. Yeah, Wonder wonderful. Steve says it's nice. <laughs> wonderful contrast. All right, so back to you, Steve. Go ahead. Sure. All right, let's fire up this welder, huh? See if we can get some coal rolled out of it. If it'll fire. All right, everybody, hold on to your seats. What well, folks I'm may not, not sure realize is Steve here. and his dad welded up most of this whole town, literally. Goes back for decades. Has welder, will travel. Hey, tell us a little bit about the TV show, Steve. Uh, we're on uh, Tuesday nights on Discovery Channel. Um, we're in the middle of our season right now, so be watching. Hey, you've been with us now for going on one, two, three, four SEMA shows. You're always there to help us out. I know you're good friends with my main man, Rich and Ingas. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Not only do I love this guy, but his show is real. And they do a really good job. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you, guys. Thanks, SEMA. Thanks for the fans. We love you guys. Right on. All right. Hey, big more Rod from uh, Vegas Rat Rods and Steve Darnell. Tonight, right across the street at the Platinum Lot. Kev, you think I'm going to get a job now? 
Uh, you're doing great, Joe. Uh, the audition, back over the here. audition continues. All right. And we just missed that awesome Chip Foos vehicle again. You'll see that vehicle up close and personal right as CB ignited. So you didn't miss anything. Just another example of the incredible diversity of cars on display at SEMA. You know, that, that Foos Impala has had absolutely everything done to it. But then again, so has the rat truck. So it's all what you're into, my friends. Kev, I don't know if I'm still high from last night, but I think I'm seeing the same truck come back. It's a guy with the gold undercoated yeah, it's him, or it's his brother. One of the two. How are you? You make me feel like I should behave. Christ. <laughs> she was cute, wasn't she? You remind me of my neighbor. She was a nut. Yeah, she did, probably didn't like you either. Joe, is it true that there uh, is no way we can see the end of the cars at this point? Well. It's true, literally. Um, let's see, Kev. No, no, we got a long time before that happens, brother. <laughs> Love to hear it, man. We are here for the long haul, my friends. We have lots and lots and lots of cool cars coming. No idea when this is going to end. So uh, if you're standing here in the crowd on either side, get to know your neighbor. Introduce yourself. Say, hi, I'm, I'm Frank. I'm Dave. I'm Tina. Welcome to SEMA. Enjoy the cruise. You might make some lifelong friends right here in the stands. You never even thought of that, did you? No, or, you didn't. No, if you your didn't. contract says you've done it at seven, you can leave at seven. <laughs> nah, just kidding. <laughs> I can't, uh, can't get enough of this. How you doing, man? What's this contract you talk of? Oh, you didn't get one? Uh, we'll have to talk later. Oh. Super Duty F3. Well, well, well. Not quite, not quite gold, but not quite brown. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, would you mind getting some coat. great Poupon for my friend? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for bringing the truck. You know, I would have brought my Ascot and Monocle if I uh, knew the crowd was going to get so uppity on us. Sure. You could sit in your Devonshire. I think it's that new uh, chrome paint that he sprayed out there himself. But, uh, Doesn't matter to me. It looks like a heck of a lot of fun to drive. You can't stick nobody in the other seat, Kev. It's just one guy by himself. It's OK. In a little car. So, Joe, I just learned that this uh, little roadster here is polished aluminum. It is not chrome paint or a wrap. This guy, this guy got sore arms putting that thing together. I'll tell you right now. Yes. And it's unique. All kidding aside, Kevin, you got to dig that. Slow oh, yeah. down. A lot of work. A lot of work. I bet if an Airstream trailer rolled by, he'd start shaking and crying. All right, Kev. I got this guy who's going to take my job in 10 years. What's your name? Sway. See you like you mean it. What's your name? Sway. God, this is going to be a tough one. All right, where are you from? Maybe 12 years. Arizona. Arizona? Oh, whereabouts? Huh? Where? Where in Arizona? I'm Bertie. I've never been there. Should I go there? I don't know. Kev, I need help. All right, what kind of cars do you like? Uh, all cars. All cars. Good answer. You gonna be a politician when you get big? All right, I'm gonna. What's your favorite car? Porsche. Porsche. Go sit down. Joe, the mission is to engage the next generation. Hey, getting all up and he be copping an attitude. Oh, from Arizona, I like Porsche. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> you know they really want to be in LA. These people in Arizona, kid. <laughs> You don't have any water. How are you doing? What? We want me to cross the street for you? Come on down. This is always trouble when someone tries to get your attention, Kevin. Usually they mistake me for somebody who really is famous. Usually I owe them money. Or they want a better spot for their car next year. That's next possible, year. yeah. Don't kid yourself, Joe. I'll be right there. I promise, and I'm not lying. You are famous. All right, Kev. Especially uh, among people that want better spots with their car. Uh, live from the King Ranch, Kevin? Yeah. Take a look at our F450. That is a Chance big Chance Glenn, very clean. Although he did miss a spot on the rear differential, if you want to let him know. Thank Joe, you. leave him alone. The show's over. Hey, there's enough wax and polish companies in the world. He shows up with a dirty wheel. I mean, I don't get it. I don't think he showed up with it. That, that might have happened uh, from that door over there to right here. Maybe. Look for that Lincoln Navigator over there. Our friend Jay Leno has his car care polish line. He'll take that smudge right off. 
great looking truck. Thanks for coming. Ken, I don't know about you, but I just love these dynamic marketing um, signs that are cropping up on all the vehicles. That must hey. have took all about two seconds to make that one. I'll tell you what, dynamic marketing is this Honda over here with an LS motor in it. That, uh, there it is, there it is. All right, we're building this vehicle. We're building the vehicle. We're, the parts are coming in. We're working on the vehicle. We get it done. And then we paint the wheels blue. I mean, what am I missing? No, I really like that. It's a new look. I saw that one guy liked it. Where was he? Where was he? Oh, he's driving. No, it's all good. It is all good. And that is a like. that is a really unique color too. It's not it's not blue. It's not it's not green. It's kind of a turquoise. It's kind of like don't use it. So he's got a Sprintex supercharger sticker on this. Is this thing supercharged? And nitrous. Supercharge that, Joe. The wheels can be any color you want because it's supercharged and nitrous. Settle down. Hey, when their windshield banner promotes a seat cover, you know there's nothing under that hood. Come on. No, it's uh, it, the big trucks. When you see the big trucks rolling by, in fact, here's my man, Scott. Scott is one of the many SEMA sales associates who work with all of our manufacturers to make it happen. He's one of our, how long you been here now, Scotty? Two years? Three years. Would you sneak in a year? Uh, where's your client, Scott? Where are they? Thank you, Scott. We already promoted Mingham. Joe, right behind you is a torpedo back Buick, a beautiful car. I think about a 46, 47. Ah, oh, Kev, that's the body. The fat fenders, it looks great. Wide whites, chop top, French headlights, all the custom tricks. These people are gonna think I'm a Buick fan here because I keep pointing them out, but it's only because such cool ones were built this year. Thanks for bringing this thing out. We got a sack, a little bit of a traffic jam. Let's talk to this driver. Hey, Kev. Uh, I feel bad that that's one of the guys that I told to go right at the light. Oh, uh, what's your name, sir? Cliff. Cliff, this thing's beautiful. What year is this? 41. 41. So I was I was post-war. It's a pre-war car. A yeah, pre-war car. Yeah, but a lot of times when you do all the mods, I get thrown off because uh, the ones right before the war and the ones right after the war were still pretty close looking. Very, very close, yeah. You've done everything to this. My friend did the whole car, yeah. I'm not even saying about who did the work. I'm saying the amount of modifications. Everything's been done to it. Everything's been done to it, yeah. So uh, what's under the hood? Uh, 350. Very nice, very nice. I love the color. What is it? Uh, it's like a pearl olive, we call it. Pearl olive. Well, it sure looks beautiful, man. I hope you had a great time at SEMA. I saw this parked out in front. You were stopping traffic all the time. Thank you, man. Kev, do me a fave. Sure, anything. I love saying that. Go on. Yeah, John Hotchkiss, yeah. one, of, one of the coolest Mopars offered. Pull over, turn it off. A SEMA Hall of Famer. This gentleman has probably one of the premier sports suspension companies in the industry. He's a SEMA Hall of Famer. John Hotchkiss, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, John Hotchkiss. John, welcome to SEMA Cruise. Oh, Kevin, man. Hey, Joe, how are you? What an incredible SEMA show. All right. Everybody have fun? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey, I've got a celebrity driver with me, Dan, who runs the SEMA office in Washington, D.C., piloting our Emax, and then we have Miles from the U.K. all the way to see the SEMA show. So what an incredible adventure. I right, joined the SEMA Action Network to help promote laws that help the industry and save our race cars against those in Washington and in your state. SEMA Action Network, the SAM. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for being here. We'll see you over at Ignited. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, some very important information about uh, getting involved with keeping the right to have us build these cars. This TA Challenger is uh, its a its a very authentic car in the standpoint of it gets driven a lot. And our friend John Hotchkiss doesn't drive it lightly. I mean, of all the cars in the show, this is probably one that is experienced the most pain on the street and track. Thanks for bringing it out. Great to see you guys. We'd like to remind everybody who is on foot traffic, if you're looking to get out, there's a, uh, a crossing back over here on the way. How would you describe this? Uh, the entrance of the SEMA cruise, where all the cars are kind of entering our area with the bleachers, you can walk back towards that entrance area and cross the street and get out through a mid-gate on the other side. So if you walk 
down towards the far end, the direction the cars are going. If you go that way expecting to get out, you're not going to. So turn around and come back this way. If Thank you're you. walking that yeah, way. I don't street. want to be rude, Ken, but I think we I think the Optimus streetcar invitational guy's lost. We got we gotta help him out. He's like an hour late. Well, he's an hour late now, but I know this car. And this has a GM LSA supercharged 6.2 V8 under the hood. And this is making over 800 horsepower, and it's staying cool because Staying cool because of a CNR radiator. Got Detroit speed parts on it. It's got a speed tech suspension system. He ain't gonna be late for long. That's all oh. I'm gonna tell you. Well, I don't care what he's got underneath that hood. He's an hour late. Whatever he's got, he's gonna step on the gas because he doesn't want to be late for that big event. He's getting there. He'll make it up. Kev, I like the look of these new Silverados. Yeah, do you really? Yeah, I do. I'm too small for them, so I gotta get the little midget model, like the Colorado. This, uh, it's an interesting front end on these. A lot of people like them. A lot of people are thinking, I want to modify that a little bit, put a different grill on it. They're very nice trucks, I'll tell you that much. I got out of one, a full-size truck. It took me three seconds to get down. Three seconds? Yeah. I don't even know what that means. What do you mean? It took me three seconds from the time I opened the door to try to hit the ground. Oh. <laughs> Ah, uh, Jason Sakurai making the move here. Jason, welcome to the SEMA show, looking good. Jason's always got his hands into something, you know, Kevin? Oh, absolutely, Jason's a mover and a shaker. He's more of a shaker. Depends what time of day it is. <laughs> All right, everybody having a good time? Now it's kind of like SEMA cruise into the night, Kev, like I was telling you, the sun's gonna set. That's beautiful. You know, when you're not looking at the cars, there is a, a beautiful Vegas skyline over there to check out. Do you know what the end of the SEMA show also announces, Kevin? I'm sorry, what's that? Do you know what the end of the SEMA show also announces? Uh, tell me, Joe. My return to drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a little Chardonnay waiting for me over at uh, a nice restaurant. Come on through, everybody. Keep on rolling, all white, looking tight. There you go. This is a serious amount of white and a serious amount of fabrication on the suspension and chassis on this truck. All right, Kev. Now, you got to get ready for this one. I'm I ready. These Jeeps are big. But this has to be, without question, no denying, factually, the biggest friggin' Jeep I've ever seen in my life. Holy man. And I think it's like going sideways. I don't know, Kev. It's a 42 MB. I've never seen, the steering wheel's bigger than most Jeeps I've seen. Yeah, that'll make you feel small real fast. They call him Big Willie. How about a nice round of applause for Big Willie, everybody? Big Willie, I think the light up red, white, and blue flag masts and this giant truck that seems to be all wheel drive, all wheel steer and, 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 and tracking a little bit sideways. Much like our friend Joe will be after the SEMA show. <laughs> so they, uh, they've they informed me that they have opened the crosswalk gates at the far end of the SEMA cruise. Uh, so you can get out that side now. So everything I said before, take it back. So Ken, you know, I'm the king of mini bikes, right? This is a modified stretch ruckus. And um, that's cool. Yeah, this is uh, one of the Honda ruckus models that obviously got put through the paces stretched out modified engine so it's kind of like a drag ruckus yeah and they also mix up the metropolitans and they split them in half with the ruckuses and they call them metrucks it's amazing what they're doing with all uh, the mini motos i see that america honda motors is bringing back the new monkey which is the uh re uh, modern day version of the z50 honda oh cool it's got the uh, honda grom 125 engine and some of the honda components but uh, yeah, it's fun to see how the power sports segment of this show has also grown over the years too, you know, Kev? All right. Got some of our youth coming through. Another growing segment here at SEMA is our power sports division. Yeah, these are some high performance side-by-side -side buggies coming in and they're coming in hot, watch it. Another cool little 
exterior work on the Shelby coming your way, Kev? Yeah, it's kind of uh, Shelby of the future, but back here in the present. The patina look applied through a wrap, very cool. Uh, followed by a pigeon 53 Mercury tail dragger, traditional custom. Looks like something Tony Ginty would drop. That's actually paint, that's not a wrap? Oh, it's plastic dip, there you go. The, Mer the Mercury's got paint. Yeah, I think the Mustang was a wrap. The Mustang was actually plastic dipped, I was informed. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me too, I, uh, I was wrong. Plastic dip. I can't hear, all right. I'm used to it. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin, you see all these modified lifted vehicles, you see all these accessorized Jeeps. It's just an indication of the uh, vitality of the industry. The aftermarket's strong, you know? The truck segment of the automotive aftermarket is giant. Uh, one of the councils here at SEMA, the LTAA, the Light Truck uh, Alliance, is the, is the biggest faction of the SEMA uh, organization. And these guys, as evidenced by the amount of trucks and the amount of Jeeps and off-road vehicles, and the, the technical term is about 5.6 zillion different parts that you can buy and put on these things, plus the fact you can make your own. This guy's gonna air this thing all the way down as we come by in the back. No, Kip, that was me, sorry. With the LED brake backing plates so you can really show off those wheels. But trucks are super hot, and, and here we have some super hot trucks. I got a guy sending me a text. He wants me to introduce him in front of his new girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tell him yes and then not do it. All right, that's what we're going to do. I'll say yes. He says no fart jokes either, Kevin. <laughs> We got, All right. We got a 90s Toyota Supra right here. These are super high performance cars. Always love these things with a uh, C7 Corvette stiffened right up behind it saying, I want a piece of that action. I want to show this Supra what it's all about. You know, I'm kind of limited in uh, my range after that big surgery, Kev. So instead of waving them on them, I think I'm sending in the wrong direction because I can only go halfway. Nice. Which surgery was that, Joe? That was the uh, bicep implant. I could see it from here. Yeah, oh yeah, I've been working out. Yeah, well that one side. It's been a long time. Love this, the uh, early Power Stroke style big Ford F-Series cruising on modern minutes. suspension or wheels. Backed up by an F-250 that uh, just, just short of being tall enough to walk under, love it. Kev, I noticed that you were talking to another local celebrity, uh, Count, Counts Customs? I was, but before we go there, let's take a look at the Ring Brothers K15 Blazer that's pulling up here. Why don't you pull it off to the side? I will. Park track. that right over here, Jim. Jim Ring at the wheel, he sees me ask him to pull over and he says, oh man, really? Jim? I've been clicking my heels together trying to go home, but it ain't working. Yeah, I, I talked to you on Tuesday and you said you wanted to go home. <laughs> this uh, this blazer is a little bit of a uh, departure from what you guys normally do, but it still has the ring quality and innovation. Tell me about it. Uh, 72 K5 blazer we did for a couple out of New York, but they're going to take it to their Florida home and enjoy it down there. Uh, new LS3 on the drivetrain. Uh, just tightened it up a little bit and hope they enjoy it. It is awesome. It is so uh, uh, clean and the way it fits. There are details in this truck. If he was going to get out right now, he would show you that when you open the door, a modern day SUV step bumper folds down. Did you see that? Yeah. This is a, a great example of a resto mod truck. We've seen a lot of resto mod cars. Now we're starting to see putting, you know, the fuel injection and the leather. That's just been around for a while, but you know, now we're adding things like these motorized bumper uh, step into the truck. And one thing I always have to say, Jim, you guys get the most stylish shirts of just about any car builder I know. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Great. Hey, Kev. Uh, did, Jim, did Jim get uh, mixed up in, on his way moving apartments? Yeah, he, he went to a yard sale, I think, and uh, got some stuff to bring home. Well, we're keeping it rolling here. Nice little bobble coming your way, Kev. You don't see too many of these for all the obvious reasons. 
Yeah, these are hard to find here in the States. A lot of uh, the ones that were imported rusted away to nothing a million years ago, but this one is, uh, is pretty intense. Uh-oh, trouble, trouble's coming. Yep. <laughs> Someone's in, headed to the penalty box, folks. <laughs> Let me get out of the way of the media over here. Once again, a big welcome to all of our media. Thank you so much for all your time and participation. If there's any of these vehicles that you see going by that you want to learn more about, jump on the internet and I would just start Googling SEMA Cruise. I'm guessing there's going to be a hashtag SEMA Cruise because there are so many members of the media, photographers and people capturing this stuff. Plus, remember, these were all on display somewhere, either inside the SEMA show or out in front, that you'll be able to learn all about them if you see something that you think is really cool. Kev, these people don't need to go to no stinky computer. If they got a question about any of these cars, they can ask you. Yeah, yeah. We're right here, and it's all happening live right in front of them, man. Nothing like an open header big block with a tunnel ram and dual carburetors. And a racy looking rad rod. This guy's combining so many styles. Normally rat rods don't have performance looking suspension and big wide tires, but that guy's setting a trend. A Karma Rivero, ladies and gentlemen. That is a car you're not gonna see when you go down to the local Albertsons to buy your groceries later on. I'll tell you right now. Once again, Kim, I'd like to recognize you. Once again, Joe, I just had my mind erased by that car revving up. Yeah, that's 10 seconds you'll never get back. I want to recognize, oh, hold on. <laughs> it's these damn fans, Kev. Ooh, I'm dead. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is going to be interesting. You can tell it's good when they start to stand up. I'm behind the barrier now. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to surprise you. Kevin. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what's coming. For all you people there in the stands, there are a ton of more surprises coming here on the SEMA Cruise 2018. Are we having fun yet, ladies and gentlemen? What do we got? Sherry, sure, yeah. great time. I am having a great time. Uh, I appreciate everybody here. I'll tell you what. I will go to a car show all by myself and walk up and down the aisles and I say all the same stuff even if nobody's listening. So sometimes I forget to consider that all you people are, are listening to my nonsense. All right, Some Chevy. Of what I apologize for it. So this lift there with me. Right? Series Chevy's we have coming fun. right at you, baby. The Voodoo Ride, yeah, this thing, uh, this is a 54, right? Incredibly wild car. Voodoo Ride Car Care stuff. We got a lease. Ah, ha, 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 ha. You can always tell because they go with the red top. Another pump lease. <laughs> There's another one. Yeah, give it up for free swag, man. When well, they got the for sale sign, Tyler. That's another sign. It's a lease. All right. Great looking 67 Camaro and flat white coming through. Full port touring car, lots of custom work. Can't fly from Nolans and Skater Man is coming right at you. Gator Man. You'll see. I think it's easy being up here in front. It, I, I know it's not easy. Not easy being here either. Oh, Christ, it's a lot of fun. Again. <laughs> Look, I already paid. I'm sorry. Slow it down. There's a cop in front of you, meatball. Yeah, jeez. You think he'd know, Kev? You'd think he would. Where's Tony from the Bronx? Tony, get out here, man. Take care of my light work. Dig that thing. C Series Custom Camper looks like the uh, Smack has picked up a truck right into a Winnebago. It's stuck together and he's going down the road. Yeah, these two guys are definitely lost. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you for that. Harry 
you go. Represent the Japanese the students represent. I ain't saying anything to that guy. Nice crawler, Jake. That guy was eating glass for breakfast out by the fairgrounds earlier. Kev, the folks from Fat Fabs have been uh, rolling out some nice vehicles. Here comes another one for you. This is super cool. Here we have another uh, K5 Blazer. Done in a different style from the Ring Brothers we saw earlier. This sucker is slammed on air. Oversized traditional looking rally wheels. Nothing but style. Kev, this guy's looking for a title of seven. I think he went out of bounds. He's out of bounds? He's looking for it. He says, can we play through? Well, we're creeping up to the, what is it? Is it dusk or dawn when it happens like this? Uh, depends on where you are. Or where are we now? It's both of those somewhere. All right, so let's see it into the night. We'll just leave it at that. That's right, man. How uh, how do you think our lighting is going to be as we uh, as we get darker? This We're going to be able to lose the glasses in a little while. Yeah, I'm wearing mine for safety. Well, it is uh, 5:30 now, which means that we've been into the Seaver Cruise now for officially an hour and a half. Right on. Hours they had me out here, Kev. Oh, cool little so Toyota time. Land Cruiser, by the way. Check that thing out. That looks like a fun ride. Joe, some of these people have been here for four, four hours? I think the bleachers were going up around noon, and some folks, as soon as they put the bleachers up, they were sitting down. Wow. I bet some of them probably closed in about five, six hours, and we love you and we appreciate that. Ladies and Just gentlemen, a nice round of applause to everybody who's here at the SEMA Cruise. We really appreciate it. Yeah, and this, this vintage looking Super Duty Ford pickup truck has a great story. Uh, that was built to be a full retro style pickup truck. And the guy that built it was transporting it here to the SEMA show, driving it across country uh, on a trailer. And people were taking pictures of it and posting them on Instagram and on Facebook and everything. And by the time he traveled two states, that thing had over two million impressions on Instagram. By the time he made it to Las Vegas, he parked and went to his hotel and the doorman said, oh yeah, I haven't found that thing, here it is. And he says, what are you talking about? That thing had over four million impressions when it got here, and now it's way over that because it tells you everybody likes to connect with a car or a truck from their youth, and that's the mission of that cool Super Duty with that retro look. And it's it's really cool to see what can happen. So the moral of the story, Joe, is be careful what you're doing because people are taking pictures. Right, the Hummer contingent is here. Fully bedlined, ready for action. Even a suitcase in the back with stickers from all over the world. Kev, I got a gentleman from Idaho who said he was here since 11. It is, somewhere. I said he was from Idaho too, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You're right, you're right. Different time zone over there in Idaho. Hey, now it's all good here. This guy with the selfies. Grow up, will you? Just get in. I love the selfies. And you know, when you're taking photos, how are you? Hashtag them. Hashtag SEMA show so everybody can enjoy them. That's what we'd like to see. Is there an official hashtag for the cruise? SEMA cruise or SEMA show? We just made one. Hashtag SEMA cruise, ladies and gentlemen. Perfect. Another clean looking lifted truck. It's amazing. And they're from all over. This gentleman's from New Jersey, Kevin. Yeah. You know him? Uh-oh. <laughs> we got another contingent from the drag program. Drag racing against gangs and graffiti. Kev, I got a celebrity in the stands. Yeah. He's a gentleman that's uh, made quite an impact on our industry. Let me see if I can get him to come down. Hey, where do you want to meet somebody who's made a big impact in our industry and have a little fun talking? Who'd like to have? Yeah, definitely. Who'd like to talk to Mr. Wade Kawasaki? Wade, come on down, our chairman. Wade, can you join us for a moment, please? Ladies and gentlemen, Wade Kawasaki, the, the chairman of the board of SEMA. family. 
Now, Wade, you have to guide me. You had a little bit. First of all, how was the show? Oh, the show was great, Joe. I mean, all our indications on attendance, a number of exhibitors, everything was off the chart. So looking forward to a great team ignited. Well, we've been having a great day after day after day after day. You and I had a chance to spend some time in that great room with the Hall of Famers just today. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's a special room to be in. I mean, all of our Hall of Famers are off. Look, we lost everybody's attention really quick. Hey, Joe, I'm going to interrupt Wade for one second <laughs> because we've got an, we got the, the 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 chairman of the board of SEMA talking, and casually right behind him comes by <laughs> an unbelievable Chrysler 392 supercharged Hemi rat rod with scroll work that looks like it's out of a vintage organ. Incredible, man! And it's a giant dragster. And Kevin, uh, to your point, that was the first vehicle that I took a photo of that I posted. Very cool, very cool. Right behind him was a Dodge Ram with people doing headstands in the back. The SEMA show is a traveling circus now here in the SEMA cruise. Back to you, Wade. Thank you, Kevin. You know, we have a very fit crowd that attends the SEMA show. Yeah. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, Wade, back to you. Yeah, sitting inside that room where he indoctrinated uh, Ed P. And safety first, friends. Safety first. A couple of challenges here, huh? Had the opportunity to uh, uh, indoctrinate Donnie Etherly as well as Chris Thompson and watching those guys up there. It's a special time and it's kind of like we're, we got a behind the scenes view. Yeah, Joe, we really appreciate your leadership there and your emceeing that event. It really means a lot to us. It means a lot to the Hall of Famers too, so it's a great lunch. There's our Liberty Walk Lamborghini with uh, Cocteau San driving it. Excellent exotics here at the show. Now, Wade. <laughs> Something's go with, you don't even need words. There's no, the SEMA no. show right there. So what's your, after the SEMA show, I know you still remain busy. What's the rest of the year look for you, Wade? What's your schedule look like? Yeah, after November, of course, we have the PRI show, which SEMA also owns. And so that's coming up in the first part of December. And that's the Racing Industries SEMA show. Well, look, uh, thank you for spending a few minutes with us. Wade Kawasaki, he's a face that you'll see throughout the SEMA show now and for years to come. Congratulations, hold on. So, hey, how about a big round of applause? Kevin Ocean, Joe Silvergaggio, these guys are doing a great job out here working their butt off. Thank you, Wade. That was pretty cool. Thank you, Wade. So, crossing in front of me right now is the Boogie Van. I'm guessing about a 65? What year is the van? 1969 Chevy Custom Van. It's a straight axle gasser style van. Vintage graphics. 850 horsepower. You can tell by the camshaft. This thing is loping and it wants to go. This is about as polar opposite as that Lamborghini you saw just a couple cars before. So and he's a two to one to be arrested tonight as well, too, Kevin. <laughs> two to one. Being generous there, my friend. Hey, I think I just secured our gig for next year, too. Oh, yeah? I don't know. Wade Thanks. likes it. Th Thanks for talking with Wade. I appreciate that. Here comes Tom. We're keeping it moving. Yes, we are. I'm not going to say anything about that vest you're wearing. <laughs> Over no, it looks good. It's a good look for you, Tom. I mean that. So, uh, Joe, did uh, did I just lose our job for next year? Yes. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's important to point out, though, that, that Wade... Kawasaki, although he's a, a super big shot with SEMA, he's also a car guy through and through and has one here. I don't know if you noticed, but when he walked by, he asked me if that vest made his butt look big. <laughs> now you lost our job. Thanks. Hey, how you doing? Hey. From around here? No? How was the show for you? Apparently, Joe and I... How was the show for you? We're on separate contracts. Good. You're having a good hair day. Not a, not a package deal. Oh, I'm not. I don't have any hair. Hey, uh, what are the chances of, uh... <laughs> There's Joe chatting up the gal in the mustache. Oh, well, I tried. Yeah, all you guys are big shots. Let's see you stepping up, asking for the order. Hey, my wife's sitting right here, pal. Yes, I know that. Mine's not. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby GT350 H convertible. In white and gold, great looking color scheme on that thing. Followed by a uh, 
an angry looking extreme mutter lifted truck with some uh, hex stacks or uh, uh, quad tip stacks out the back. Followed by Slando's Porsche. Kind of a retro theme, not something you see here in the US every day. These gentlemen look like they're visiting from somewhere else. Our truck contingent continues to flex their muscles here. See a lot of lifted and leveled decals. You know, that's one of my favorite books. Lifted and leveled. Think oh, yeah. out of the dub group. Hey, hey, how you doing? Come on over. Hey, were you here earlier? Yeah, how'd you get back in? So I got two-wheel Roland over here in this new Harley Davidson. He turned his luggage box into speaker wagons. Yeah, I don't think he's a part of the show or anything. I just think he's worked his way into the crew. He's riding through. He's upset that he can't carry his lunch anymore because of the speakers in the box. Well, he does wear a helmet. And I give him props for that. Another clean Bronco, looking good. Got the high dollar leather in there. Very clean Bronco. And it looks like we might have some swag. T-shirt alert, ladies and gentlemen. These guys in the Broncos throwing some stuff out. We got ourselves a police cab. Thank you. I'm talking into my water bottle now. Here you go, guys. Yeah. Hey, hey Kev, we got a dunk. Representing really our urban dunk. dunk. That's the first one of the crews today here, Jeff. I really dig the treatment on that Bronco. Check out the tires. They painted the BF Goodrich logos in red, white, and blue. That's a really neat look. I dig that. Okay, we got a Capri Stomp rolling up with some Forgiato wheels. Yeah, man. Representing all the different styles of cars that you can build here at SEMA with the Don. I got to borrow that and bring it to my house. That's about, my a, neighbors put for about a 74, I'm going to say. And they just keep on rolling, Kev. They sure do, Joe. No end in sight, my friend. We've got a 68 Camaro coming up. Another modern pro touring style, custom pieces, the whole grills fab, flush glass. Trick two wheeler suspension. Aluminum wheels, he's hoping he's got enough in the tank right now. Kev, I see another vehicle you're gonna absolutely love. A little clean GTO. There we go. Young looking supermodel couple. Life's good. Got the red lines. She's not gonna even look at me. I know. No, the, the girl in the Mustang already texted her. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the girl in the Camaro's been calling. <laughs> So a square body that is slammed on the ground, but still kind of, I don't want to say patina, but well-worn looking paint. I love trucks like that. This is something you could drive and enjoy and not worry about getting dinged up in the local grocery store parking lot. And Joe, you're right, that GTO is killer. That's the Kim Diggett Design GTO. You might round of applause for our Las Vegas Metro. Yeah. They got one lap to go. They've done a great job. Every once in a while, Kev, we gotta put a Lambo on a trailer, you know? Yeah. I've, I've never actually done that, Joe. Oh, yeah. It's not that I have a wrecking boat to put on a trailer. It comes with it when you buy it. <laughs> Just saying. There goes our job again. Look, if I can't spell the name of it, I don't want to own it. Right on. Here comes uh, a satin BMW. Sporting the Toyo Tires logo right in the front glass. A little McLaren action for you. Full cage, big brakes. <laughs> 911 Turbo Leaf. Followed by a McLaren, ladies and gentlemen. A beautiful car. It's got a, a license applied for, a registration sticker on the, on the license plate. Either he just bought it or he's borrowing it from his best friend, and that makes for a great best friend. Kevin, I'm not sure if this is a two-door or a shaped four-door. 
That is actually a three-door, Joe. These Suburbans came from the factory with a driver and passenger front door and only a passenger rear door. That is not custom, but the rest of the truck is. Flush door handles, how you doing? Good satin blue paint, tuck bumpers, lower, cowl hood, custom interior. I love that Targa's sliding sieve roof. You know, they, uh, they're they great on sunny days. You don't want to get caught in the rain. Beautiful blue color, great looking Suburban. Kev, this gentleman has a question. I'll have him ask as he goes by. Sure. Ask Kevin. Can I do a burnout? It looks like about the fastest taxi cab around. I would probably... That's a good looking blue right here, Kev. The Ford Platinum. Going through the Platinum lot. A little green mat. We got there a little BMW action? I don't know. I can't keep up with all these cool cars. How you doing up there? Are you Omar? Who are you? Chris. How's it going, Chris? Where are you from? And who you represent? Dallas, Texas. Representing Team Bennett and Omar Grill. Did you have a great SEMA show? Very. I'll see you back next year. Joe, this awesome F-250 rolling through is providing a whole light show, lighting up the whole night. You're right, it is starting to get dark, and that is when this thing is really shining. Platinum Super Duty, full custom suspension, great blue color. You know, the off-road segment's really getting big. We had uh, a huge contention of these trucks. Man, Kev, you talk about earning your keep being an off-road desert racer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the, the toughest job on four wheels right there, is racing one of those things, being able to walk afterwards. We had a McLaren coming through earlier. I don't even have the heart to tell him to turn it down. He's worked so hard for it. We've got a Mercedes McLaren over here, buddy. Another car you're not gonna see every day. Gullwing. I think they rated these at a zillion horsepower and a zillion dollars. I'm coming from my uh, King Diggin Design, another one of their awesome representations here with this Corvette, Kev. Maybe you want to pull them over. Uh, David King Diggs bought about eight vehicles out here. We'll see if we can grab him a little bit later and talk to him. It's okay, I can't hear anything either. Yes, representing the mobile electronics section. That was a big thing, Kev. Remember, what kind of sound system do you have in your car? Rolling up now over here is the uh, the Kindig Corvette that uh, Joe was mentioning. This was another car that came across our stage Monday night at the SEMA reveal. Beautiful, beautiful car. This is the one I was talking about for those who were here in the very beginning. The trim on the car is all hand done. The fit is all hand done. The Kindigit design team does a great job. It's really neat to see this one rolling on its own power here at the SEMA Cruise. That's the beauty of it too, Kev. There's no posers. You know, we've attracted not only the best of the best, but all of them are able to roll down the road. Yeah, no posers, just us. Just speak for yourself, big guy. <laughs> Trying to get your job back here, Joe. I want to say, Kevin, that I'm thoroughly impressed with your automotive astute knowledge and your personality. <laughs> okay, you're hired. Well, I didn't quite say that. But... No, I want, you're doing a great job. Thank you, Kevin. How about a big round of applause for our co-host, Mr. Kevin Osteen. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, thank you, Joey. But... We're about, uh, I don't know, like 10% uh, through the cruise. Just, nah. Just a round guess. I bet we're 29%, 35% through. How you doing over there? Are you Brock? What's happening, Brock? Uh, nothing much. Uh, just going through this line. You know, I'm kind of tired of some lines, but I think I'm going to give you guys some burnouts. What about that? Well, we got a lot of room for you at the Platinum Lot. Looking good. Thanks for coming out, brother. Representing Max's Tires. All right, Brock, there'll be none of that. Ah, oh, that Brock, such a crazy little kid, isn't he? I bet you can't do that in the Platinum lot. Well, he did ask, Kev. I just didn't answer him. 
Yeah, well, we got to make sure everybody gets through here because if something happens and we jam this up, the SEMA crews will be uh, here forever. How's everybody doing up there? Big trucks, nice and clean, a little dually action here. Heck let's, yeah. Let's pack it with 60 guys. Why not? Drive around with them. Well, there's a ratio thing we can work with, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> ah, you're one of those guys, huh? I know. What, about 2,800 a month? 2,800 a month? 80 down? They'll be calling you. They'll be calling you. Joe, you sound like you're speaking from experience. No, not at all, Kevin. Another rolling light show with these lifted Ford trucks. You know, the, uh, the SEMA show is all about new products and new cool stuff. And the, the LED technology has just advanced so far and is being used in so many different ways. Uh, right now, we're lighting up the whole street with these lifted trucks that are all lit up underneath. And we got a couple of Porsche GT cars coming through, a 2 and a 3 RS. Carbon brakes with yellow rotors. These two guys look like they want to race home. They got California plates. You know it as soon as they hit 15. It's on. Kev, I need some help. You got it. I have no idea what the hell this thing is coming by me right now. It's dangerous. Get out of the way. All right. It says Carl Mann King. Oh, I remember him. I remember that guy at Move In. There you go. I thought he was here for some Disney animation movie. I'll tell you what, this thing looks like it has the same radar evasion technology as the F-117 bomber with all the angles and satin surfaces on it. Way too many sharp edges on that one for me, kid. Yeah, he wants to slip in and out without being noticed. There we go. Crazy ride. Oh, another Riviera coming. Give me a little mood light. Just give me that first light switch. You gotta know how to play that, man. There you go. Now we're looking at a 71 rev. Yeah, see? Now you're going. That's like somebody's got a nice suit on with bad shoes. You gotta help them out. Right? You know, you're only judged by three things in your life. Your spouse, your house, and your car. And your shoes. <laughs> sure. Good looking cars. A 72? 72, I could tell it's a 72 boat tail style Riviera. The 71 had fins, louvered fins in the deck lid. The 72, they took them away. But uh, these cars are one of those styles where you either love it or hate it. That one, I love. It's been blanked out. It's got a great stance. And it's got an interesting option. This is the right arm phone holder option. It comes with two right arms that stick out the passenger side that hold cell phones for you as you drive. Not to mention the optional T-top ejector seat, Kev. Yeah, right, right. 455 Buick, tons of torque, endless style on that car. Love to see it. I just wasn't expecting this out of you, sir. What's your name, bud? Yeah, Holmes. Your name is Bud? Yeah. Wow, I got that right. What is this? This is a little dude buggy. Where can you get him? 200 cc, goes 40 miles an hour, it's for air three level. Lighter. Nice way to get involved in the motorsport section. Can I have this one? Can I have this one? Yeah. Hey, thanks. That was easy. Okay. There you go, man. It's got a new truck. People like you, Joe. They do. I donated. The, the very cool Ford F1 pickup truck. Oh, well, oh, bud. Sporting an EcoBoost motor. Very cool. Nice to see. What is this? Copper in the bed? Polished copper. And uh, it doesn't make any noise, but I bet it's fast. Nice truck, guys. Once again, Kevin, I'd like to give a big shout out to our sponsors for the SEMA Cruise, Rolling Big Power, Kia, Anzo Lighting, Mother's Polish, Shell, and Hot Wheels, celebrating their 50th anniversary with us right here, Kevin, at the SEMA Show. Right here, man. Right here, right now, live. It's a SEMA cruise, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming out and spending some time with us. Otherwise, it would just be Joe and I watching all these cool cars, and I'd feel guilty about that, that we weren't sharing. So I'm glad you decided to come out. Another Supra. This one's breathing its ex turbo exhaust right out the fenders, which means it's a race car. Easy. July 4th, 
fourth all over again. It is. One of the participants of the 2018 Ultimate Adventure. And I took my sunglasses off for safety. I, first mistake, never look right down the barrel of the turbo exhaust. Or date a married woman. Yeah, that too. Kid, now the heavy lights are coming out. All those LED things you were talking about. I know, we're going to see them all tonight. And right in front of that, we are talking about the Yenko cars before. Here we've got a Chevy Nova with a Yenko-style stripe on it. And this one has a, uh, a full cage, pro street-style rear suspension, giant wheel tubs, giant wheels, ladder bars out the back. He's got the exhaust coming out the fenders too, but he's going to be a lot nicer and not spit at me with fire. Or what uh, Rick Johnson would describe as one of those skinny Novas, Kip. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, man, kind of digging the, uh, the light show provided by our lifted trucks. It must be cool to be in a giant parking lot with a whole bunch of these things lined up late at night with all the lights on. But now that I think about it, that can happen at Ignited right here tonight. What is a new van? that's adopted a little old school van. Look. It's a custom Dodge van. Got the uh, quad exhaust sticking out the side. Yeah, he's got like zoomy pipes out the side. So when I was younger, I had a 1979 Dodge Maxi van full conversion. And uh, I've kind of been maybe jonesing for another one. Very cool, good to see the vans coming back. Hey, thank you, man. Holy airbrush work. You need to get some of those LED lights from under those trucks and shine them on the side of that van because there's dragons and all kinds of scary stuff painted on that one. Well, here's a, a cool little Merc. Looks oh. like it did back in the day, Kev. Yeah, don't let that one fool you, Joe. You were talking about the resto mods. This guy's sitting on a modern chassis with a modern engine, but the outside looks like this thing could have been racing in the LA River in the movie Grease. Super cool car. We see a lot of those on the West Coast, those big full-size fat body cars. I dig one. You know, I was lucky enough to buy Firebirders 51 Fleet Line, which I still own. You still have one? Yep, I kept it in line. I put a 261 in there, a Saginaw 4 speed, and I'm gonna drive the hell out of it when I get home. You should, that's that's a cool old school ride. More interesting graphics on this lifted F-250. This thing looks like it's been through a war. Well done. Once again, Kim, I'd like to uh, remind folks to check out Meekum Auction, meekum.com. Find out their latest schedule of upcoming auctions near you. Over 60 auctions planned for this year. Meekum Auction, the premier auction event series. Toyota old school. There's a Meekum auction coming up right here in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks, Joe. There certainly is. I dig Vegas, Kim. I've had a great time. It's a great place for us to have our event. In fact, it's the only place where we can have the SEMA show because no one has the number of hotel rooms to accommodate the crowd this size. No one has a venue this large to accommodate an event this size. Uh, Las Vegas is a perfect town for us and they're great partners. And we really love coming out here annually like I'm sure everybody else does. I love Vegas when it's the SEMA show. I like Vegas all the time, but I, I like it more now. I really dig this Cadillac. Now we're looking at a 63 Cadillac, and this one's pretty trick because he's shaved a lot of the side trim to smooth it out and really kind of bring out that long arrow style shape with the shorty tail fins. By 63, Cadillac was starting to get away from the tall tail fins, and these uh, 63 and 4 cars are about the last time you see those before they went to a, a kind of an integrated fin. It's a neat car to see. Well, you also. Kev, you'd be the one to let him know he left the sticker on his tires, though. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what they say. Oh, come on over here, Carlos. Hey, you got a hell of a guy and a hell of a cat. 
Say hello to my main man, Carlos. Carlos, go over there and say hi to Kevin Osteen. Carlos has been a part of the wheel industry forever, makes some things happen, works with Luxani. Let's see how the SEMA show was for Carlos, if you don't mind, Kev. No problem, we'll bring Carlos over and, and say hi. Hey, Carlos. Hey, how's it going? It's going great, man. So you've been in the uh, the wheel industry, I understand, for quite some time. Yeah, I've been in the wheel industry at the same company, what we would consider would be the best wheel company, not to be biased, but we're Lexani Wheels. We're an international company. We do one-piece cast wheels, we do three-piece forge wheels, and anything in between. Lexani is always known for having one of the star attractions here at the SEMA show with your display. Uh, amazing stuff. What'd you bring on new this year? Well, as you can see, I'm in our brand new, you know, limited edition Dodge Demon. We uh, had it hooked up and worked with a couple of partners. We worked with West Coast Customs, as well as Topo, the Wide Body King. We did a one-off body kit. We've got uh, APR, uh, what do you call it, rear, uh, rear wing front splitter. We've got AccuRare, a universal air system for our, you know, being able to drop it on the ground, basically. Uh, what else? Uh, RPM roll cage with uh, 600 seat belts. So, you know, we did a little bit to it. You don't need to do much to a Demon. No, and uh, so the Demon is a ton of horsepower on 800 and some from the, fa 900 from the factory, right? Where, where are you going for this thing now? Well, we haven't done anything mechanically because we had to get it here to SEMA. So, you know, you know what that's like. You, you just did everything else. We did everything else you needed to do. I mean, I don't know if there's too many people that can pass us on the freeway back to LA. So I think we're good. Are you driving this back to LA? Go it out here and driving it back. I love to hear it, man. Hey, listen, great to meet you, Carlos. Very cool. Appreciate you taking part in the SEMA cruise. Great car. If you're on the highway back to Los Angeles, friends, step aside and let our man go because uh, he's going to win. All right, that was our friend Carlos Bra from Lixani Wheels. Thanks for hooking that up for us, Kev. They keep on coming. We got a little, uh, I don't know here, we got a little Tesla action maybe wrapped up. Yeah, a little old school sport compact coming our way. Got a Saturn Tesla followed by a uh, 3 Series BMW. Cage car, looks like he does some drifting looking at that rear suspension. We've got a very sinister black El Camino coming through. 1970 car wrapping the pipes for us. We've got a giant white and purple Dodge Ram pickup truck with more of the LEDs. Some of these street crawler wheels, like I like to call them. Low profile tire on a big wheel on a lifted truck. Kev, I'm up here in front. Tons yeah. of cars still in line. Got a little gold wing action up here. How you doing? What's your name? Ashley. Got a little nervous there, Ashley. What's the matter? Where are you from? Wyoming. Wyoming? You know, a lot of people ask me if I'm from Wyoming. Why's that? No one's ever asked me if I'm from Wyoming. So, uh, you like what you see? Absolutely. Any favorites? Um, no. What are some of your favorite cars? Joe, Joe, real fast, I want to point out this split window Corvette that's coming through. This is another kid all your design favorites. car. Beautiful, beautiful blue Corvette for those who dig those. Go ahead. Look at Kev Dog. Kev Dog's coming through. And his Mercedes. You know, Kev Dog got engaged here in Vegas, I understand. Right. From uh, Kim Digga Designs. How about a nice round of applause for Kev Dog? Give it up. Pull yeah. over there, Kev. Say hi to Kevin. It really takes something to customize a Gullwing Benz. How's it going, man? Oh, I can't complain. I'm so happy this year has been amazing. So, uh, Joe just said that you got engaged here. I did, I did. I was lucky enough to ask my girlfriend of almost five years to marry me on the, uh, in the Westgate on the uh, Motor Trend stage. So she said yes, so everything is good. Everything is good, besides the fact that you're driving the Gullwing that you guys just finished up again to. Right, right. I mean, what better way to leave SEMA in this beautiful 55 Gullwing? 
it takes a special personality to want to customize one of these cars. Uh, we, I know we're starting to run out of ideas, so we had to try something new. <laughs> well, as it's sitting here idling, it's making voltage, it's not heating up. What's under the hood? Uh, it's an LSX 454. It's on a Roadster shop chassis. This thing's ready to hit the track. Awesome, awesome car. Congratulations on a great show. Say hi to the team for us. Thanks for taking part in the SEMA group. Hey, thank you, guys, and thanks for coming out. See you next year. Right on. These two obviously think they're at the Macy's Parade, Ken. Gullwing Mercedes on a Roadster Shop chassis, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I need some action. Otherwise, I get bored. How about a Leggings Hot Rods built grade 8 contender that went for the Riddler Award at Autorama this year? This Pontiac is insane. Look at the dashboard, Joe, as he, as he drives by. Oh, amazing, kid. I'm digging every part of it. What's your name, sir? Steve Liggins, Liggins Hot Rod. Steve, how does it feel to have one of the coolest cars at the CV show? It's great. I make the most of it, brother. You can't see it from the stands, unfortunately, but the dashboard on this car is actually taking from the design of a 60s Chrysler, where everything is rounded, and they took it to their friends at Dakota Digital who made custom numbers for it. It's a globe that's all lit up. I can see it from here. The numbers spin around the Speedo needle. It's insane. That's a sunroof going over the top with stainless bars. Pontiac details through and through. Great, great car. Thanks to Steve Leggage for bringing that thing out. Great job. Hey, Kev. Yo. These guys are definitely getting stoned in their car. You think so? I think so. Are you telling me to stay clear? It's legal here. It is. Right on, man. Damn. That's an indica strain, I think. I love that LED strobing effect on the woofers in the back. It makes like time stand still. You wanted some action, Joe. You just got it. I did, man. Yeah, you know, it's like a like an indirect vape hit. You know, I brought my vape pen, but Party Rock is in the house tonight. Again, representing Lifting Level, probably from the West Coast. It's a cornucopia of cool car stuff, Ken. It sure is, and uh, we've been seeing a lot from the Broncos, but we're also seeing some international scouts here. This one is the only one I've seen that's lifted on modern off-road style suspension, uh, completely anodized, a lot of custom stuff. Very cool looking truck, man. Thanks for bringing it through the SEMA Cruise. Little love for the corn binders, the international. Yes, we will rock you, my friends, with car after car and truck after truck from SEMA 2018. This looks like our first uh, Mercedes G-Wagon of the night, Joe. We had a, a few of them with us, I recall, from last year. They kind of work. You see a lot of them on the West Coast. I'm good with everything, you know, even Mercedes. Oh, yeah. Kevin, are you going to go to the big movie, Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody? I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. It's a heck of a story about uh, the band Queen, right? I heard it was terrible, and you should stay home. Uh, thank you for saving me about 11 bucks. That's just for the soda, brother. <laughs> yeah, I know. It tells you how much I go to the movie theater. Any Adam Lambert fans? Just kidding. <laughs> More cheeks. Party Rock is in the house tonight. Again, representing Lifted and Level, probably from the West Coast. It's a cornucopia of cool car stuff, Kev. It sure is, and uh, we've been seeing a lot from the Broncos, but we're also seeing some international scouts here. This one is the only one I've seen that's lifted on modern off-road style suspension, uh, completely anodized, a lot of custom stuff. Very cool looking truck, man. Thanks for bringing it through the SEMA Cruise. Little love for the corn binders, the international. We will, we will rock you. We will, we will rock you. We're in the net. Buddy, I make a big noise. Ain't in the street, gonna be a big
Yes, we will rock you, my friends, with car after car and truck after truck from SEMA 2018. This looks like our first uh, Mercedes G-Wagon of the night, Joe. We had a, a few of them with us, I recall, from last year. They kind of work. You see a lot of them on the West Coast. I'm good with everything, you know, even Mercedes. Oh, yeah. Kevin, are you going to go to the big movie, Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody? I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. It's a heck of a story about uh, the band Queen, right? I heard it was terrible, and you should stay home. Uh, thank you for saving me about 11 bucks. That's just for the soda, brother. Yeah, I know. It tells you how much I go to the movie theater. Any Adam Lambert fans? Just kidding. <laughs> More cheeks. Kev, have you ever owned a Jeep? Uh, I have not actually owned a Jeep. I've ridden in many. Uh, our, our restoration shop, we've worked on quite a few of them. Have you owned a Jeep? I, I didn't have to because I worked with Omics ADA and they always let me drive Jeeps. And I used to have access to Arlie Emery, the Gunnies Jeeps, who was a spokesperson for us. Oh, cool. And uh, it was fun until I tried to get out of it. I kept hitting my head on that roll bar over Ooh. and over and over. This is how we learn. I, so my Jeep face, sir, sir, do you think this is a good time to be making a phone call? Who are you calling? Take that free runner. Uh, calling my mom. Phone. Oh, wants to be quiet? I'm coming home. Are you really going to come home? Oh, yeah, I'm coming And that's really your mom you're calling? Absolutely. Did you have a good SEMA show? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, keep it going, brother. Welcome to the SEMA show cruise. Hey, buddy, we appreciate you calling your mom. Just going to ask you to do it down at the other end. Kev, you know, you too could reach this prime demographic right here, right now. Oh, yeah. Here's seeing more lifted Jeeps, more LED lights. I'm thinking we got to... Um, it may be real, Kev. You got to tell me. Here it comes. Uh, I'm gonna say probably not, but you know what, Joe? That doesn't even matter because the fun, the fun is real, without a doubt. There's a couple representing Bell Tech, some clean pickup trucks. You remember yeah. Bell Tech from back in the day, right, Kev? Sure do. It's another company that's still going strong today, man. One of the innovators of the Bell Tech drop spindle. That was actually Super Bell Axle Company. Right on. Jim Ewing, turned that into Bell Tech. I remember the first time I brought a spindle to the editors at Carcraft for a product release, they told me, they threw me out of the office, Kevin. <laughs> they said, what the hell is that? It's like, well, you put it on Firebirds or Camaros and it lowers the stance. Yeah. They wanted no part of that. Well, you know, some of those guys were about as cool as an oven. But then, uh, the man behind Beltec created that Corvette rear roll pan that got so popular on the back of the pickup trucks. And Eddie Van Halen had one. He certainly did. I actually have the keychain from that truck because at the time I was a publisher of Sport Truck Magazine. Yeah, you sure were. may remember Sport Truck Magazine. That was There's a great issue for us and that was a great high profile vehicle build that we did along with many others. But uh, yeah, trucks are cool. Another little Aaron uh, making its way through. That little 57 there was done by a guy you know, his name is Chip Foose. Yes, is that uh, my main man Carson Love? Hey Carson, hook over there and say hi to Kevin. Come on over here with the 57. Yes. Uh, now you talk way, about a man that's had a history not only with working with the iconic Chip Foose, but also worked at Mattel for many years. Yeah, with Carson Love. I did want to point out that orange uh, 68 Firebird that went by. Not a Camaro, good to see the Firebird. But now we got Carson Lev in the Foos 57, and Ed, I'm sorry, Josh, uh, Carson, uh, my, my arm, arm isn't long enough to reach him, so tell me what's going on here. Well, we're just trying to get this thing over to see McNutt and stuck in the same lineup everybody else is. Yeah, but it's a line of nothing but SEMA cars. A lot of eye candy, that's for sure. Yeah, that's why it became the SEMA Cruise. This thing is unbelievable, and I'm gonna guess uh, from when I talked to Chip last, about a week ago, this was still in a million pieces. About five days ago, this was in a million pieces. <laughs> well, Carson, I'm not gonna hold you guys up. Thanks for stopping to chat with us. Please uh, say hi to the crew. Nice to see you, Josh. 
Ladies and gentlemen, get a good look at this uh, Aqua 57 Chevy. It's on a custom chassis. This one has had all the panels touched in some way. It's a full custom color, and Chip Foose's team was putting this together in real time of just a few days before the SEMA show. They pulled it off. It looks dynamite. All right, friends, we have a couple people we're bringing back out. Mr. Tanner Faust and A.J. Janik. How about a nice round of applause for Tanner Faust and A.J. Yeah, Janik, everybody? Yeah, a round of applause. A.J., what's up? Oh, nothing much. We're, we're just kind of waiting for the SEMA cruise to pass by. We know it's almost done, maybe. It's still going, but we're actually headed to SEMA Ignited because at 7.30, we're going to be announcing the Battle of the Builders winner. So we hope to see you guys there. And anyone have their favorites? So who do you think is going to win? Anyone? They're all winners, AJ, They're all winners, right? yes. AJ, tell us, what are you up to? What, uh, who am I talking, who's talking? It's me, Joe. Okay, oh, oh, Mike, oh, there you are. How what are you, I know you've been I, busy. What do you, I, what do you have on the schedule after the SEMA show? I'm gonna rest. And you have, uh, your young son is no longer a young son. He's almost as big as your husband, I understand. He is, he's a big boy. He's eight years old, so we're gonna, I'm gonna spend some, uh, quality time with him when I get home. Well, we look forward to getting him out here and having him he a part of the show. He will be here soon. Show. He loves cars. Great. Thank you, AJ Tanner. Uh, so you, you getting excited about uh, finding out who's going to win tonight? Yeah, they won't tell us. You know, we're in the trailer. It, you know, it would be nice to know just so you know, we could get some questions loaded. They just won't tell us. So it's kind of building up the anticipation for us also. Uh, I think it's going to be close. And... Um, you know, the format is very different. I've only done it the last two years, but the format this year is very different than last year. So you've got uh, a totally different mix of cars. It's not all about, um, you know, just old Deuce Coupes, uh, to be honest, that are gorgeous and amazing, but there's a lot more variety this year. So we'll see what happens over there. Well, I think it's really awesome that you guys announced the winner of the Young Guns uh, part of that competition here earlier tonight. Uh, tell me, uh, you are a guy who connects with a lot of the, the younger crowd with what you do. Tell me about the importance of that. Well, I think it's critical, you know, they're the next generation of drivers and we live in a time when uh, some 16 year olds would rather get a new phone than a driver's license. So it's important to uh, keep feeding the passion that uh, the young, young drivers have. The Young Guns, for those of you that don't know, is for uh, builders, fabricators, owners under 27 years old. And um, these guys, they're, they're putting blood, sweat, and tears into these cars, not just, uh, you know, representing their companies or, or uh, putting big dollars in. And it's really a lot of passion that drives the builds that we see from the Young Guns category. So um, I love it, and I think it's a critical, just a critical category to, to represent. And we've got a finalist from the Young Guns fighting for the win here in about 45 minutes. So Tanner, uh, most of us got into cars at a young age. What was your your earliest recognition, you know, or earliest memory of having an experience with a car that that really hooked you? You know, do, do you remember back that far? Do I remember back that far? I'm not that old. Come on. Oh, that hurts a little bit. <laughs> that was actually meant for Joe. <laughs> Uh, I do. I remember it like it was just a couple weeks ago. I was five years old. I was with my dad. Uh, we were going from Colorado Boulevard to Hamden um, in Denver, which is a sweeping right second gear corner. And he had a 912V, which is uh, about the slowest Porsche ever made, um, which I now own. But uh, it's this yellow Porsche. We're going around a corner and the tires were squealing. And I was thinking, what the hell is going on? It's the first time I'd ever heard that. And uh, he said, well, the tires must be low. Let's not talk to your mom about that. And it was, uh, I, paid, I paid attention to every single gear shift, every car noise, every headlight shape since then in my life. And I think, like a lot of people here, that was a moment for me that just became, I became a car enthusiast and that never changed. Like you see throughout SEMA, people are lifelong car enthusiasts. I love it. That's an awesome memory, Tanner, and uh, I appreciate you sharing that. It's our mission to have those experiences again with more young kids. Tanner, AJ, I know you guys got to rock. Thanks for taking a minute to share with us, and good luck over at Ignited. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll see the winners crowned shortly at SEMA Ignited. Hey, everybody, how about a nice round of applause for Tanner and AJ? Yeah!
Hey, Kevin, you should have asked him what expensive car he bought when he got all rich and famous. That's what I'd like to do. Oh, there you go. Joe, be careful. You're going to get shot with a T-shirt cannon if you're not careful. Is that a T-shirt in your gun or you're just happy to see me? Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, more opportunities for some swag. We've got these guys in this black truck shooting off the T-shirt cannon left and right. Everybody be alert because this thing's for real. Look at that. That thing flew about 150 yards. Stay alert when you catch that shirt. Our friend here is uh, driving a VW and he's got a bicycle on top in case he runs out of gas, Joe. This is a pretty, fart small, a pretty smart fella, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice, nice. Got a very cool little 32 Ford with a laid back glass and a, a little teardrop hard top on top. Traditional scallop paint scheme. Followed by one of the younger builders, Mr. Brandon Wargo, busting out his uh, two ATZX. That is a Datsun that is actually half Cadillac. Look that one up on the internet. Hey, Kev, this uh, this next scooter coming in comes from the Pride Mobility Group. Uh, it's got the uh, one horsepower electric engine and the adjustable seat. That oh, I'm is, sorry. I, uh, this is an awesome ride, awesome truck. Big old Ford on air, wide open bed, carrying audio, carrying the bike, carrying the matching scooter. Right on, buddy. Thanks for joining the SEMA Cruise. Scooter with a nitrous bottle on the back. And the scooter's got the train horn. Kid, we are two hours and 20 minutes into this SEMA Cruise. I think really? So. Yeah. The cruise might not be going by fast, but the cruise is going by fast, if you know what I mean. So this is one of these slingshot vehicles that I saw. You can actually demo them on site, take a ride, look pretty cool, having some fun. Just another example of how some of the new ways you can go down the road. Yeah, that thing's like a, it's like a roller coaster ride that you can drive on the street. You know, you look at this thing and you expect to pull the bar down over yourself and, and click yourself in. That thing looks like an awesome time. Very cool ride. How fast do those go, Ken? I wonder. What's that? I wonder how fast those things go. Probably pretty quick, huh? Like motorcycles. Yeah. Look, the white wall is part of the rim. Oh, I bit on that. I fell for it. <laughs> she got me, Kev. Warrior Dog Foundation, probably one of another worthwhile programs or promoted here at the SEMA show. We had some uh, veterans that were with us enjoying their uh, trip out here. Many of them uh, earned Purple Hearts. Yeah, certainly hope they enjoy their trip. Oh, I, I, I know they have. It's a blessing to have those folks with us and celebrate them and all their efforts. Any military folks that are here with you, we salute you. Absolutely, Joe. We salute you. Thank you, guys, for all you do. And gals. All right, Kev. Another cool little Pontiac coming our way, a little rag top action. Right just, on. Just the color you like. I'm also digging this uh, this red Chevy Apache pickup truck. What is it, about a 58? Yeah, with the Staybill logo on the side, also from 1958. We all pour uh, stable in the Midwest and in colder climates in your gas tank when you store your car for the winter. A problem you don't have here in Las Vegas. Yes, but if you open your door, you'll attract tarantulas, Kevin. Well, there you go. Or scorpions, whatever they call them out here. <laughs> Great looking GTOs, uh, 66? 67 GTO. This one's been uh, modified a little bit. Some of the trim has been taken off. It's been smoothed out. Four people enjoying the ride. How's the SEMA cruise? You having fun? Everybody's bobbing their heads and giving me thumbs up. So I guess that either means yes, or you guys don't speak English. No, Kev, there's oh, nothing yeah. to Thanks for coming. Full-on track-tested race Camaro coming through. This thing's like NASCAR right here at the SEMA Cruise. Yeah, oh, yeah. More Jeeps coming through and some 
Kevin, I was really impressed with Kia and not only their indoor display, but the fact that they got so many Kia vehicles out to the builders. They're looking pretty nice and pretty clean. Outstanding job by Kia of late. So fill me in, Joe. I understand that Kia had a giant display here that involved uh, the addition of 100 truckloads of dirt at one point. Is that true? Yeah, uh, Kia took over the area between the center hall and the south hall where Chevrolet used to do their ride and drive. And the task that they had is that they can only set up Monday night after 10 to be completely ready for their experience, which really was more of an off-road course setup. So in a matter of like 12 hours, they had to bring over, I don't know, 20 million tons of dirt. They had to chase the course, change the course of the whole parking lot. And just like everything else that happens magically here at the SEMA show in a couple hours, voila, instant off-road road course, no stress express. It was, I was amazed at the fact they were able to do that. There's a gentleman in an old Salisbury. You don't find those too often. That's incredible. That Kia display is another thing that could probably only happen in Vegas. Well, you know, even when Chevy was doing it, Kevin, it wasn't so much that what needed to be done was unsurmountable. It was just getting it done in like a tenth of the time that it would normally take. So in typical Vegas fashion, all that takes is writing a bigger check. Yeah, this is true. We got a little gas or action kind of staged up here at the entrance. A little blower action sticking out of the hood. Yeah, a little vintage gas or uh, train horn. Speaking of gassers, I was really impressed with Finnegan's gasser when we uh, took over the streets at Woodward. Did yeah. a good job. I bet that was a great time. The Cherry Bob, Kev. Tilted front, 468 cubic inches. Got a little metal flake action going, a little wheelie bar action going, chrome wins. It's got a power tilted front. Even better. Very cool, 57 210 platform, post coupe with a minimal trim. Wheelie bars, chromed out old rear end, just like they had back in the day. The vehicle behind it. This would still fall into that rat rod category. Kevin, are we looking at maybe as these vehicles evolve an evolution of the rat rod category? Yeah, and now they uh, they all kind of come full circle. What's amazing about those vehicles to me, Kevin, is I thought early on that the rat rods were just a little bit more of like visual. You know, the deep down outside of the exterior, it really wasn't as tight, but. Man, as these vehicles become more popular, they're becoming even better engineered. Engineered, you know, I, I'm glad you used that word because some of the uh, some of the rat rods out there look like you just took an old pickup truck and crashed through an antique store and all the stuff stuck to it. But there are a lot that are very interesting the way they engineer them, put them together, a lot of creativity. And here's something you don't see every day, a Euro spec uh, Scirocco 1, right? Yeah, the total opposite end of the spectrum again, Joe. Only one I've seen the last couple of years. Yeah. Gray market tumblers and headlights. Visiting us from Japan. Over 138 different countries represented yep. here at the SEMA show. Yeah, absolutely. You can roll up here, Mr. UTV. Come on up. Keep things going. Everybody's going to be heading over to the Platinum lot. For the big SEMA Ignited, we'll be announcing the winner of the Battle of the Builders. Once again, all the SEMA crew sponsors, I'd like to give them a big round of applause. Uh, Rolling Big Power, Mother's Polish, Shell Oil, AMSA Performance Lights, Hot Rod, excuse me, the Hot Wheels Legends, and Kia. Well, this guy's hell-bent on running me over, Kev, so. Yeah, he looks like he's going to do it. This is a clean super. These guys came here from Japan. Nice to see you. You think, uh, you know, we build cars in the Midwest and bring them out to the SEMA show. Nowhere near as difficult as bringing a car from a different country, especially one separated by water. Yeah, there were people that had problems getting here, like from Washington, D.C., let alone different countries. And 
effort as a collective. All these guys did a great job getting the vehicles together, getting it to Vegas. And now, as it all kind of comes to an end, there's going to be a lot of celebrating going on across the street, that's for sure. Supercharged alcohol burning sand buggy here. This thing's insane. A little clue, a clean GTR action. Yeah, there's Godzilla, buddy. There's your real nice clean square body truck you're gonna love, Kev. What's up, Mikey? I'm here with Mike Rebetto with the Young Guns. Mike, what's going on? Let's keep them moving. Yeah, we are. We're trying. Trying to get everybody over here for the big Cena United Bash. We've got the Young Guns, we got the Battle of the Builders. There's nice clean little fastback Mustang coming your way too, Kev. Lots and lots of action over at Cena United. We know it's fun to kind of cruise through here, but we need to keep everybody moving. That's a good looking truck. Mikey, how are we looking back there? We got a lot more? Tons. Tons. T thousands and thousands. We got tons. Mikey sounds like the count. Thousands of cars. Good looking GTA Mustang. We've got a USAF themed BMW. I8 electric car coming through. The Lexus high rod in front of it. A clean little Porsche coming your way. Looks like a uh, big tank Grand Sport Corvette coming through as well. Very cool old car. And a train horn, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, what's in the Osti garage? What are you tooling around in nowadays, Kevin? Well, gee, Joe, so do you remember uh, our 62 Ford Galaxy 500 XL convertible? I certainly do. The red one, we still got it. Love that car. That uh, that car changed my life in many ways, and, and I think that's a great story. A lot of times you get in your old car and, and you think it's just an old car. That car, I was driving it on the Hot Rod Power Tour many, many years ago. Joe was there doing the event staff, and uh, I broke the car like every night just because it, it was a kind of a recent restoration and it wasn't fully sorted out yet. Uh, one of the cities it broke in was St. Louis and a person that helped me repair that car overnight is my lovely wife sitting over here waving her hands and that's the night we met was because my car broke down on a cross-country trip. So old cars, we like to say old cars make new friends. Uh, some of them, you know, you stick with for life. Well, that was not a setup and you're making me cry now. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, it couldn't happen to two nicer people. Ah, oh, thanks, Joe. Kev, I got another lease and somebody gets lost. Nice. Coming your way. So we got some more off-road racers, another high-lifted Jeep. We got a gentleman really enjoying himself in the back of this uh, 61 Chevy wagon here. For those of you guys who are, uh, you know, my age and remember riding in the rear-facing back, what we used to call the, the way back of that station wagon, those, those were good times. The only problem is if you leave that rear window open, you get asphyxiated from exhaust fumes. Maybe that's why my parents always put me back there. Angry sounding C6 Corvette coming through. C5 Corvette. Thank you. I'm over here in all the fumes. I'm starting to get a little lightheaded. Yeah, I uh, definitely. Well, I've been feeling like that for the last nine days. Uh, I'm, I'm told by Scott that uh, there's a lot more cars back here. Yeah. We got a 62 Bel Air? Hell yeah. Got that one right. Kev, coming up, one of the more popular, I'm not sure if it's an 8 Camaro coming up to you. How are you? One of the more popular Camaros that we had here at the SEMA show this year. Yeah. 
Once again, folks, uh, don't forget to check out all the upcoming auctions that the leading auction company, Beacom Auctions. You can check them out at Beacom.com and get a list of over 60 upcoming events that will be taking place in your neighborhood over the year. That's Meekum.com. Yeah. For a little Mazda action. RX7 400, did you say? From Alabama. Hey, Joe, that, that uh, 68 Camaro you were telling me about, that maroon colored car, I was just informed that that thing was driven here from Massachusetts and they're driving it back. There is no trailer. Yes, I remember. No trailer. There's a little fun ride coming up for you, Kev. Yeah, absolutely. We got we to gotta keep the crews moving, friends. Appreciate everybody bringing, bringing everything they got. I think this guy brought a couple of things that he had. A little, kind of a chop and swap. Comfortably fits about 20 people. And he's wearing a cartoon shirt from back in the day, Kev. We gotta, we gotta keep it moving, friends. All right. Kevin, I think you're going to enjoy a little bit different look. Way back, what's this, maybe a 55? 58. 58, thank you. 58 Impala, uh, this thing is, folks, you're never going to see another car like this as long as you live. This 58 Impala with all this carved steel detail work on it is unbelievable. How many man at, hours on that, Kevin? Oh, zillions of hours. Right? It's not a graphic, it's not a stick-on that is hand-carved steel. Unbelievable. And you know, one of those vehicles that could just slip by in this maze of awesome vehicles, but each one of them, a story in itself. Oh, totally, totally. Very cool stuff. Great looking little vintage Nissan. Well, Every time I turn my head, there's just another amazing one-off Camaro rolling by, Kev. Yeah, well, 69 Camaros are very popular. I believe this was a Detroit Speed Build car. Uh, it came out very, very nice. Showing uh, a nice stark white and uh, two-tone orange with the satin gray accents on it. White wheels. Interesting uh, color choice on the wheels on that 69 Camaro. A late Mustang followed by a Lamborghini. Backed up by a GTR. And, and a Dodge Challenger. I think that was the uh, third or fourth McLaren that we've seen so far. Yeah, uh, yeah, beautiful looking McLaren. This one's in blue. These cars, uh, you know what happens, Kevin? They sell these guys these doing cars. a little, doing a little flame show for us tonight. We need to keep it moving, folks. But see, the problem is when they're when those guys are leasing those cars. The salesmen tell them that's how they're supposed to drive them. They're creating monsters, time and time again. I don't know. The McLaren was. Uh, it's a very cool car. I don't know if he's getting used to the clutch or what's going on there. Yeah, I'm thinking it's a newbie. He'll figure it out eventually. Yes. Just not soon enough, kid. All right, there's this guy again. I think he was looking for the Universal Studios uh, entrance, Kim. Oh, yeah. He really got the point when he was building that one. Whole thing's bed line. What do we got here, Kev? A little stretched. Man, is that a Lexus or an Audi? What is that thing? That's a great question. It's kind of like a Lexus badge. Yeah, the one behind it. Yeah, yeah, there's a fleet of them. Metro police in action. I want to thank our Metro officers who are here on site throughout the SEMA show. Going to be with us to the end. A little clean Chevelle action. Keeping us safe and. Oh, yeah. All you need right there, Kevin. Little 68 Chevelle. 
all you need. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I also dig this truck right behind it. So what did we do with the front end of this uh, Chevy pickup that makes it look so unique? Well, this is off the bigger truck platform, but it's been adapted to a pickup truck. So it's the, uh, the K series instead of the C series. So this uh, really has that industrial look with the rest is kind of a C chassis, but Phantom four door, because of course those never came in a crew cab. Kid, I'm a little speechless over this next contestant. I'm gonna let you take it away. The Jeep on the tracks? Yeah. Yeah, this guy goes, you know where this guy goes? Anywhere he wants. He does. You know what that guy has? What does he have? Hemorrhoids. <laughs> I'm sure it's far more comfortable inside than it looks. Look at him, he's out of here too. It's not like it's just, you know, crawling along. It crawls quickly. Uh, Kev, I'm happy to report I've been reduced to one site of vision now. Yes, I'm going to look at our sponsor logo wall above the building for a moment as the 58 billion candle power LED light bar shines on my eyes. Yes, it's like cheating on the eye test. Thank yeah. God they made those logos big enough to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a nice little heavy powered yeah, 66 Charger. Charger. Yeah, looking good. I love that stuff. Great, great looking car. These things are really cool from the factory, and these guys took it up about 100 notches. They kept one of the cool themes of the electroluminescent dash panel. Uh, so the gauges, back when this car was new, they had a nice blue glow to them. Today, you need to keep your eyes on the gauge because that has a Hellcat powertrain, if I'm not mistaken. A clean little SS out of the 60s. Followed up by a, a big brother new Camaro. Oh, this, uh, this gold Camaro that's coming across, this is another real treat to see because if you're all familiar with the Riddler Award at the Detroit Autorama, you know, the, the highest award bestowed on custom cars, this was a grade eight contender. This was one that uh, was going for the big prize. Uh, really amazing amount of fabrication and custom work on that Camaro. Not many people get to see that thing driving around, but we all get to see it here tonight. Well, Kev, let's see if you can get this guy to turn his lights on. You want me to have him turn his high beams on? I don't think you're going to get any headlight action out of that. I'm mesmerized right now by the LED light backing plates on this green Ram pickup truck, making those giant pillar wheels just glow. This uh, this 69 Chevy right here, it's, it's the classic two-torn orange and white, but instead of a C badge on it, it's got a Cummins diesel badge. A lot of work on that, make it more drivable. A lot of torque. 800 horsepower Cummins diesel and a vintage 69 long bed lifted real high, blowing some black smoke, very cool. I'm starting to cry over here, Kevin. It's yeah. another 51 Chevy pickup truck like the one I sold. What a dummy. We've got the most radical looking Jeep you're gonna see here tonight. Thanks for coming out, guys. So our friend here in this Audi is about to remove his rear view mirror right from the windshield. Great looking car. Plus 54 horsepower just buy a chip too. Just had to see my man Juan from Mexico coming up having a good time at the SEMA show like so many others. Welcome Juan. Yeah. Glad you're having a good time. Make sure you head over Juan with all your friends over to SEMA Ignited which is located right in the Platinum lot. They'll be going on till 10 o'clock tonight. A little automotive hijinks happening over there. You think? Just a couple. This little Ford pickup truck does not sound like a stock late model Ford truck. It says it's got a Whipple supercharger on it, wide open exhaust. But I'm digging, really digging this 51 truck. Any roadkill fans out there? <laughs> Amazing what Freiburger and Finnegan created, isn't that, Kevin? Congratulations. I just learned that this 51 truck was a, a high school project. 
And uh, the sponsor logo on the side is the Blaster Corporation. We've all used the Blaster to uh, bust loose nuts and bolts for many, many years. I bet they had to use several gallons building that thing. That's cool. Kev, did you get a chance to see the roadkill vanishing paint? Yeah, Challenger. There, no. Here it comes, the vanishing paint. Right on. Driven by our friend John McCann. John McCann from uh, Carcraft? From High Rod. Oh, oh, that's right. He got bumped up. Welcome, John. What's going on? You How's guys? everybody doing? Welcome to the SEMA Cruise. Tell me where you're driving. This is the Vanishing Paint Challenger, and it's already overheated. It's already overheated, right? <laughs> that's one of the downsides of the SEMA Cruise when you have cars that are what we'll call minimally engineered. Yeah, I had to let it cool off for a little bit. I was sitting on the bridge over the freeway, but. Uh, Keeping an eye on the water temperature right now. I got gotcha. you. Well, we have another few seconds before you idle off. What's new? What's that? What's new? Oh, uh, lots of stuff happening in uh, Hot Rod Magazine and Roadkill. So subscribe to Motor Trend on Demand. Right on. Here's the man who creates a lot of that content that you like at Hot Rod Magazine, Mr. John McGann, ladies and gentlemen. What do you say, Kev? His radiator was overheating? Yeah, the car's overheated a couple times already. He's had to pull over and let it cool off. And he's watching the uh, the, the temp table climb as we were talking, so. There's a, there's a term for that. Yeah? It's, it's roadkill. That is roadkill, that is the term. There we go, our friends from American Trucks. Awesome job they did there. Huge monster truck. So many big lifted trucks here. Again, just a good sign that everything's working well in the industry. It's a I'm good indicator of things. Digging the Jeeps, really digging the vintage Datsuns, the Z cars that we're seeing. This one's got uh, eight stack injection. Looks to be about a 240. 10 stack injection, oh my goodness. Bring it home now. Good old fashioned 90s diesel Chevy truck done kind of sport truck style, flames front to back on a modern wheel and suspension. Kevin, Very, we, have a, we have an onslaught of big trucks. I do. And beautiful women. We've got a, uh, a very cool Chevelle pulling through, custom hood on this one, trick suspension, it's lowered, it's got brakes. Great color. So some of these big ones coming through next, this two-tone gray or silver and blue Ford. This is about a 79, 78. I like this body style a lot. This is another one that, uh, it has a definite following, but they're, they're becoming more popular to more people. Uh, and it's unusual to see one lifted in this fashion with a lot of the modern suspension tricks. Nice, nice blend of styles on this, very cool. And of course, the giant Dodge right behind it. Hey, I want to give a shout out to my main man, Moss. Tumas Mendiola, thank you, brother, for being here. He's always with me. Right on. Moss was here when we were firing up this cruise back in the day, and he's here year after year, so thank you, brother. A veteran. Veteran. A veteran in his young life, Kev. <laughs> and that, my friends, is what they call a train horn. Just in case you're unclear on what those are called. More good-looking exotics. How you doing over there, brother? Heading over to CMA Ignited, over the Platinum Lock. Get a chance to see this Porsche up close and personal. Another good example of that GT3 class. Yeah, those are great cars. All right. Hey, Joe, do they have room? All right. Over there for all this? Tommy from Enzo, come on over. Hey, one of the big sponsors, Ken, of the SEMA Cruise are our friends from Enzo. Enzo. Enzo USA, offering a complete line of performance lighting. Let's find out how the show was for Tommy from Enzo. What's happening, Team Enzo? How's the show for you? I see your name everywhere. Thank you for being a sponsor of the SEMA Cruise. What's the message from Enzo for everybody here in attendance? 
I'd say don't leave anything in the dark, guys. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, I don't leave. Now, your booth was huge. There was tons of people there. In fact, now you had a tough time even getting through. What is it that's got everybody's attention with Anzo? You know, we built this great 2018 F-150, showcased some new lights that nobody has yet. So, took that, we actually got our 2017 F-350 behind us, got that any level kit. It was a showstopper this weekend, or this week. Um, what uh, ways are folks able to find out more about them? Want to send them to your website? Definitely, AnzoUSA.com, guys. AnzoUSA.com. You know, you've been with us since we've uh, started this cruise, and for the most part, uh, thank you for your support. It helps uh, everybody have a great time. It's just another special benefit that we all get to enjoy through to your support. The support of Anzo Performance Lighting. Tommy, thanks for spending a few minutes with you. We'll see you over there at SEMA Ignited. Where's my man, Alan Jossie? Thank you, Alan, for doing a great job. It's Anzo USA Performance Lighting as they make their way back into the SEMA cruise. Thank you, Tommy. Thank, thank you, for friends, from support. Anzo. Joe, we have a, uh, a giant party on wheels coming through. We have uh, these guys from High Performance Audio. They've got a tag axle F-Series truck pulling a boat, pulling a whole bunch of other people in the boat, throwing stuff everywhere. I remember these lunatics from last year, I think. Were you guys yeah. with us last year? <laughs> All right. You having a good time so far? So when we get across the street, we're going to have even more fun. What do you got back there? Diesel, well sure, I should have known, right? It's just a diesel motorcycle, Captain. Yeah, hey, you know, it, it takes a special group of people to know how to have a lot of fun with a boat and no water. Congratulations, well, I'm help out my friend. Some of these folks. You guys got it on lock. Way to go. Right on, guys. Thank you, thank you. Handing out some Anzo bags. Yeah, we got some, who didn't get one? We got there some Winston go. swag. Throwing some coolie cups your way, folks. Don't worry, these don't hurt if they hit you. There you go. So, uh, Joe, we've got people here from all over the place. I know we were talking before about the SEMA show having visitors from 140 countries. Uh, we've got a friend here from Argentina here tonight. Uh, tell me your name. Anna. Anna, tell me uh, what brought you here from Argentina? What? Why did you hear? Deep? We come uh, for vacations and to see the show. Came to see the cars. Yes, we he loves the cars. Very cool. So uh, he has a uh, uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse in Argentina. Excellent. Well, are you having fun here tonight? Yes, good. Great. Well, hopefully you got a couple of fun stories to tell your friends back in Argentina about what it was like to be at the Sigma Cruise. I don't understand. Hopefully you can uh, share some fun stories with your friends back home. Ah, we will tell them uh, all we. Have a uh, pass today, and we have a lot of friends uh, who love cars. Very good. Well, so do I. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Thank Don't you for cry for me, Argentina. I knew that was coming, Joe. Oh, well, sure. Beautiful, by the way. That's my color commentary. Yeah. Very colorful. Uh, that's bringing me to tears, even though your song said "Don't." Ah. How about a nice round of applause for our main man, Paul Cunliffe, making things happen over here, keeping that traffic going. Yeah. It's not an easy job. You know, like, Thank you, you so much, Paul. Paul. Of traffic with a flashlight. Like, what the hell is that flashlight going to do to help him? Paul's a very important person with the Freeman Company that helps set up the entire SEMA show and uh, has done a great job of standing here with us and helping the cars move. This is a job that you don't have to be doing right now, but you're still here, boots on the ground, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, Paul. Well, this is a bonding moment for Paul and I, too. You get to do this annually, Kevin. Yeah. I know that you're new, but... Maybe uh, you'll let me into that club eventually. So I'm digging this RX-7. This is uh, about an 85? 85, nailed that. Very cool looking car, rotary powered. Ready for the rally. Clean looking white 69 Camaro. Has uh, what we call the ice tray hood. That's the, uh, the SS hood option. The hood scoop looks like you could pour water and freeze it, crack it, and make ice cubes. Kevin, I'm ready to make a deduction. What do you got? I'm basing a deduction that we are in the South Hall clearing out because of all the trucks. Hey, that's a that's brilliant, Joe. I didn't even think about that.
So that tells me that we probably only have about, about four more hours. Another thousand cars, yeah. So I'm liking this uh, this Ford Super Duty that just aired itself down. It's hard to see, but the headliner has an LED star field, so everybody inside can look up and see the stars, even though it's not a convertible. Joe, did I tell you the trucks were popular this year at the SEMA show? It's no lie. Kev, it's the cops again. Again, put man? Put the stuff away, will you? It's legal here now. You said it was legal here, yeah. Christ. Another great looking Super Duty lifted up. All right, they're throwing stuff away over here. They're throwing stuff out. This one's showing off its chassis and suspension with some more LEDs and has a whole crowd of party people in the back. Florida license plates. Did that get driven here from Florida? All the way from Florida, guys. Driven, it's gonna drive back after going to see Ignited, right? Yeah, right on, right on. Kev, I want this one. I want a clean V8 Jeep with a beautiful woman sitting next to me. There you go. I'd like to make that my order. Uh, I think you can get that on Craigslist, the whole right. deal. I'll tell you a couple other things you get on Craigslist. <laughs> you get the Jeep and the girl, I know it. Thanks to our friends at uh, Drag again for uh, having lights on in a law enforcement type vehicle and, and uh, not stopping us for anything. We got the uh, light force happening on this uh, four by four Chevrolet van. Hi, Maxi. You know, the next evolution is the LED strobe lights and we're seeing them here on this four door Jeep. And I, I agree, I dig this, uh, this other vintage Jeep V8 side pipes. CJ5? CJ5? CJ7. Very cool, guys. You know what's really cool, Kev? I had uh, the chance to stroll around at night. That's what's really cool. When we're able to walk around the see the show when no one's there. And yeah. See the vehicles and steal things from the... Oh, sorry. Uh, get to walk around the vehicles and see them without people all around. And I was, uh, I was just amazed, really, with... You know, with GoPro, I walk by their booth and they've single-handedly taken our industry to another level because we get to capture everything now on those cool GoPro units. And after the SEMA show ends, it really starts back up again because all the video captures and all the pics that tens of thousands of people took are all available to see. So I live off the SEMA show and see and watch things that I haven't I had the chance to experience while I was here, but I could still, behind the comfort of my own computer, watch all the things that took place here, and I invite everybody to do the same. Oh, totally, man. You, you can kick back with your phone. You know, the crazy thing is the, the GoPro camera, as you mentioned, they've been SEMA supporters for a long, long time, and the latest generation, it's called the GoPro Hero 7. It has image stabilization. You could be swaggering, falling down a hill, and still get a perfectly smooth shot. And that camera streams live right to the internet. So now those images you're talking about are being accessible far faster, if not real time. So I know for a fact right now that there are people over at Ignited that are streaming this. One thing that I would like to add to your commentary about being able to walk up to all the vehicles at SEMA Ignited and check them out, most of the builders are right there. So finally a chance to, to learn about the truck, learn about the Jeep, learn about that car, hear what they used, meet them, get to know them, and it's all happening right over there. And Kev, they did it right. There's music there, there's food trucks there, easy access, literally steps away from where we are right now. Can we go? Uh, so we better be able to go. Although I do have to make a pit stop before I go. Uh, but it's grown, well, it's just grown SEMA fashion. You know, everything is right there for you. Everything is right there, whether it's Chip Boost or your favorite car, or maybe having the chance to meet somebody new that you haven't had a chance to meet before, talk to them. It's a, it's a great time. It's true, and you touched on an interesting uh, fact about the whole SEMA experience. 
everything about the SEMA show inside the trade show, it's industry only, but everything is, is pretty easy to get to, I mean, outside of the crowds, but it's well lit, it's laid out, it's safe, it's uh, conducive to doing business. So it's good to hear that they've extended all that to the SEMA Ignited. And you have also touched on another thing, the idea of a food truck in the SEMA cruise. Think about that for next time. Well, you matched that up with our idea about UPS. I think we're on to something. Giveaways and food. Hey, well, Kevin takes a quick little break here. I want to just take a second to mention and thank all of our sponsors again. Earlier, we had a chance to talk to Tim from Enzo Performance Lighting, Enzo USA. I'd like to also thank our friends over at Rolling Big Power, Mother's Waxes and Polishes, our friends over at the Shell Oil Company, Kia, and Hot Wheels Legends celebrating their 50th anniversary with us here at the SEMA show. Once again, I want to give a big thank you and a welcome to everybody here who's stuck with us in the stands. Those of you who have migrated over to the uh, Platinum lot, I got no problem with that at all either. Just go over there and have a good time. While you're there, if you get a chance to see Kevin Osteen, go by and say hi. Hey. Hey, you know what I'm gonna do right now, Joe? Seeing that we got a little uh, pause on the SEMA cruise, there is a, uh, a Jeep here, it's lifted, it's got kind of a twinkly paint job on it with the word Maxi, or Moxie, Moxie painted on the hood. I'm gonna talk to the driver, what's your name? Hi, my name's Brittany. Hi Brittany, tell me about this Jeep. So uh, my Jeep is actually a crawler build brought to you by Sprintex Supercharger. So it's lifted, we have Fiat Footbridge K and three tires, race line wheels, um, Volant, performance just really just a lot of fun um, it's actually Kevlar and it does have a lot of metal plate into it Wow yeah because the color tell me about the color so the color is actually a little joke it's actually matched to an iPhone rose gold I knew I saw this before you have you have on the back of the women's cell phone so uh, how does it drive it drives Amazing. So it actually has a TerraFlex six-inch long arm lift with Falcon shocks, and it drives so smooth. That's nice, but it still looks very, very capable. Thank you. It's very, very capable. We will it very heavily. Only pretty for SEMA. Hey, very cool. Well, have fun uh, getting it dirty again, Brittany. Nice to talk to you. Thank you for taking part in the SEMA cruise. I'm glad you got to talk to her. She didn't want any part of me. Yeah, well, I can't say much for that. But... Hey, Kevin. Everybody wants to talk to you, Joe. You know that. Sure. Speaking of, come on over here, Rich. How many more vehicles we got up there, brother? Oh, about another hour's worth. So where are we now? Are we uh, cleaning out center hall still? All the halls are clear, my man. So these are just the vehicles that are outside? All the vehicles that are outside right now on the road. Well, congratulations on doing a great job, brother. That's no easy task. All the vehicles that were inside the halls are out. And now we're getting through what appears to be the last 35, 45 minutes of the vehicles that were parked outside, which tells me we probably got another hour of this, Kev. You know what that means, Joe? Time is running out. We have to act now? What if I act now, Kev? If you act now, we'll throw another one in free. All right. Send $9.95 for your free brochure. Once again, a big welcome to my main man, Scott, one of our SEMA sales executives here who, you know, those guys got a tough job. First of all, they have to ask people to give them money to sponsor all this stuff. Then they got to work all day and have to make sure that everything they sell their sponsors happens. So thank you. Thank you for all the work you've done, Scott. Thank you for all the SEMA sales associates for all the hard work and effort that they've made. Yeah, thanks for making it happen. Yeah. It's very important as well. You know, some folks put all their marketing and branding budgets and efforts into the SEMA show. And we do our best to make sure everybody gets every penny worth and some. Right, Kev? Oh, yeah. Want to give a special shout out to the man behind the, the music tonight. DJ Enoch, thank you, DJ. Look forward to having a little bit more fun with you as we grow this big SEMA show in years to come.
Ken, do you think you could stick your finger between the fender and the tire of that Volkswagen? Uh, are you asking me that I should, or do I think I can? I don't I, think I, you I, can. I'm not going to. I know oh. that. I don't think you can. No, I, I, I can't. I'm not going to take that bet. You're right. Do you think you could ride the bicycle on the roof with only one wheel? <laughs> well, I did one night, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, I see uh, a lot of lights up there still. That means the show is still going on. We've got a lot more cars coming and trucks and Jeeps. All straight from the SEMA show. These are some of the hottest show cars and trucks and a lot of real cars and trucks that are driven all the time that have been brought out here to showcase some of the coolest new parts, trends, and accessories for all kinds of different genres of automotive aftermarket parts, man. We got a survivor rolling your way up here, Kev. A little yeah. uh, Jeep action. I got a little lifted Honda coming your way, I think. Or is that? That's got to be a clone. No. All right. All right, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see, and we're going to bring it to everybody here, too. Front row center. Got a nice Nissan Z coming through. With a rack on top of the wing, a little unusual there. Nice looking uh, good guys pace car Mustang coming through and and this one is a mod modern interpretation of the uh, I believe 1979 Ford Mustang pace car it was also yellow with a running horse up the side kind of neat okay Kev here comes what I think is or was or wanted to be a Honda Accord at one time <laughs> It identifies as a Honda Accord in some way, but it's a it's a gasser style yeah, once again, straight right. axle front end. But right about that. it's electric, Joe. It's the ah, Tesla. It's powered by an electric motor, man, and I bet it is insanely fast. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this guy's <laughs> launching this thing. These electric cars, they rock, but they got no warning. There's no sound. It just all happens at once. Our friends from Truck Hero. And a big display at the SEMA show. Looking good. A little old school van coming in again. I dig that Tesla. All right, he got us. He got us. Little Chevy van. Looking sweet. Love them. My buddy Tom Hay back in La Crescenta loves those vans. They're just so cool, you know? And they were very affordable at the time, too. At the time. But times change, man. Well, I wonder how much now. I'm sure just getting into one of those probably be about 10, 15 grand just to start, right? I'll tell you what, check out the Meekum auction. There might be one there. I told you how I feel about Meekum. It's, they're real. They're real cars, they're real prices, they're real people. You can find out their complete schedule on the Meekum.com website. Over 60 events upcoming this year. The well, here's a little vehicle that uh, doesn't need any description. It's definitely what promoted as the Tin Man 2 pickup on the back of the trailer. Another example of one of these well-engineered vehicles with, uh, I guess, some really good engineering. Yeah, well, it, it takes engineering to build something like that. And by the way, your, your orange Chevy van has made it up to me. I also dig this thing quite a lot. Uh, these guys are, guys are having a great time in the van. You know, something about that ratio you mentioned earlier is a little bit off, but it, they're doing good. And I'll tell you what, the, uh, the Tin Man you're talking about, a lot of people on the internet think that this rig is photoshopped. They don't think that this is an actual, you know, well-engineered rat pulling a gooseneck trailer with a truck on it. They think that that's not real. And I'm here to tell you, you're seeing it with your own eyes right here at the SEMA Cruise. I think that makes it even cooler, don't you? Oh, totally, totally. <laughs> the Tin Man 2, ladies and gentlemen. Live and in the smoke. Get yourself some of that, Kev. Get yourself a little diesel hit. Yeah, I, I have been. I saw a famous video, I think, of you last year doing a, a full two lung inhale of diesel smoke. We call that the Joe moment, Kevin. The <laughs> Joe moment. <laughs> it certainly was. 
That was before doing vape pits were cool. I was snorting diesel. That sounds like an angry kitty cat right there, doesn't it? Thank you. Well, how can I not steal this opportunity? Get over here. Get over here. I'm here with uh, Kelly Osteen. Kelly, you got to be pretty proud of that guy over there, aren't you? I'm super proud of Kevin this week. He's done a phenomenal job, and we're always impressed with how smart he is about these cars and his history. It's amazing. I was watching him do his deal in the Grand Lobby, and like a machine, one after the other, interviews, one after the other. You knew he knew more about things than those folks he was even interviewing, but he, he's got such a nice way of, you know, he humbles up, yet here we have him in front of all these people, and he's done a great job not only entertaining them, but also educating them. I'm a pretty lucky guy, just like you're a pretty lucky gal to have old Kevin Mosty around, huh? We're all very lucky to have the knowledge and the kindness of Kevin uh, in our lives, for sure. Well, thank you, Kelly. Thanks for sharing a little bit of them with us, okay? Kelly Osti, everybody. Yeah, here's the Kelly. Thank you so much, my lovely wife, uh, extolling some virtues. I, I owe you huge for that. That's uh, very, very kind. And Joe, you're talking about that Joe moment before of inhaling stuff. I think we better curtail that a little bit because you're starting to sound a little wacky. I appreciate the kind praise, but holy mackerel, pal. Well, Kev, just to be sure, you got the better end of the deal. I'll tell you that right now. I'm just glad you got my back, brother. You know I got yours, too. All right. All right, so it looks like we're about, ah, we probably got a good 40, 45 minutes left in cars that are going to be coming through this SEMA cruise. It's been an epic one. It's been a long one. It was sunny and hot out when we started. It's dark and not quite cold. A nice little cool breeze out there. Everybody's going to get ready to go over to the Platinum Lock, where all the, we'll just call it the automotive, Chaos will be happening. Looking forward to seeing some folks. Hey, how you doing? Can't you see him in the middle of announcing over here? Oh, you are? You drove from Nebraska or Alaska? You drove from Alaska? How do you do that? In a, in a car. Well, um, you know, I've actually spent some time in Alaska. What's the hot rod scene like in Alaska? I imagine it's a lot of trucks and off-road. What's your name? Lots of trucks, off-roads, classics, hot rods. Got a whole mix, tight community. Have lots of fun together. Did you uh, meet anyone else from Alaska while you were here? Lots of our buddies with shops, lots of people down here that either moved down here or want to move up there. I was able to go fishing uh, in Alaska. I caught a 91 pound halibut. Just for the halibut. I, ca but about, I caught a 67 pound lingcod, which apparently you guys are the only ones who eat, the locals. And I caught a 42 pound steelhead salmon but i bring that up only because it provokes one question and that question is is alaskan bush people real no not at all <laughs> right then so we got a couple things cleared up kept we're gonna have you meet us over there at the platinum lot all the way from alaska folks right on welcome from the ice monkey garage Kev, get it I, I get it. I get it. And you know, I just got to point out that uh, dirty money lifted monster truck that just went by was. Uh, I, I, I've used that joke many times. It's, it's it's not funny that I could walk under the truck. That one I did. That is the uh, the record holder for the highest lifted truck here today so far. I see some more of those Anzo USA powered vehicles making their way through. Got some friends with this Vulcan off-road design. This guy's trying to catch up a little bit in his uh, power wagon from Pitbull Tires. That's a good looking little vehicle here. Look at that tow rig. That thing is killer. Got the horns on the head, Kev. Yeah. His little color. tandem axle in the rear. Yeah, legit tandem axle. Oh, uh, Team Spags. I remember that guy used to charge five bucks to tune up soapbox derby cars. Now he's an entrepreneur. There you go. <laughs> Great looking suspension. Those old power wagons are cool. And I know there's not much left of it in this thing, but that boom almost looks functional.
Chet, there's a gentleman who either has to go to the bathroom or thinks that the SEMA cruise is his. Uh, he saw a sign that said merge ahead, apparently. Yes. So he thinks he's going he's gonna to take right. his 69 Chevelle and, and just merge right in. I bet he's got a little bit of heating problems. You can tell. It's like somebody's got to go to the bathroom, Kev. The irony is that the car is called Frostbite, if you read the sign. Oh, you do it. Yeah. For real. Somebody should have told him when he was painting that on there that he was asking for a, a check. Kev, these guys don't know what they want to do. They don't know if they want to camp. They don't know if they want to go river rafting. <laughs> I know for sure he wants to get that girl in the back seat in that jacuzzi over there, though. <laughs> the folks from uh, Vision X giving you some visual examples of all your capabilities when you're out there. Is that a portable jacuzzi? What is that thing on the top, Kev? Uh, that's a great question. I think that's actually the tent on the top of the front and then the top of the trailer, it sure does. It's a jacuzzi look or a hot tub, man. Look like a hot tub, yeah. In fact, I'm gonna make my way over. We'll chat with these people and see, uh, you know, maybe they play rock, paper, scissors on what camping activity they're gonna do. I got a little quad cab safari with a little uh, Trans Am hood snorkel coming up. All right, so is that a jacuzzi up on top of a hot tub? No, it's actually a Shut Industries uh, trailer back there. I see the trailer, what's on top? Um, no, it's actually another tent. Another tent, see Joe? You know, because otherwise it'd be dripping on everybody. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. This is an awesome rig. You guys can do uh, just about anything you want with this rig. Pretty much, man. Uh, good uh, good shout out to James Barood uh, Tents, uh, uh, Vision X Lighting, uh, Advanced Accessories Concepts, and uh, Trigger Lighting. Everybody, all the sponsors that collaborate on this truck. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, definitely a lot of fun to go out and play with. All you're missing is a, is a pool table, I think, and you got an ideal weekend. A pool table and a jacuzzi. Huh? Yeah, well, Joe already has the jacuzzi idea, but. Uh, Maybe for next year's SEMA. Thanks for coming out, very cool. You know, Kevin, a big reason why people do come to the SEMA show are to see the new products and get ideas. I think we had found our new idea. We had what I uh, You gotta interview these guys with this uh, one-off quad cab safari. I remember this young dude when he was rolling in. And uh, I, like, I like individual cars. He's got a, the little wood grain I'll take vinyl on the side. Sporting some appropriate wheels. It looks good. Looks like it's packed with a bunch of guys having a good time. Welcome to the SEMA show, guys. When you have a chance to meet up there with Kevin, tell them who you are, tell them where you're from, and tell them what you were thinking when you built that car. Yeah, yeah. It's we're, nice. We're going to get to the wagon in just one sec. Uh, right ahead of him, because I got all these people in these bleachers down here, uh, we're going to take a look at this uh, another C Series Chevrolet that is powered by a Cummins diesel. So uh, tell me the impetus here. Are we saying that uh, Chevrolet doesn't have an adequate diesel engine, or what do you got? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's inadequate, but it doesn't have the power that this thing can produce. So what's, uh, what are you making with this one? Uh, somewhere in the forest. It's still a non-intercooled motor. So this is uh, non-intercooled, so it's making everything it can on motor? Everything it can. Well, it has the turbo on it, but yeah, everything it can on motor. Right on. Well, it's a good looking truck. I love that color. Yeah, yeah. All right, so onto the safari wagon. This thing has a lot of cool stuff going on. I dig that shaker hood. I dig the wheels. Tell me about this. Yeah, it's an 89 safari wagon uh, with LS3, 500 horsepower, six-speed manual, coilovers, Camaro spanker, really. Yeah. So you used, uh, well, we'll kind of walk and talk here. There are a lot of performance B-body parts, suspension parts available that you put on this. A deep bargain. No, there's actually a, a few brands now make coilovers. We got coilovers on here, C6 disc brakes all around. Drive the crap out of it. Drove it to Las Vegas in May from uh, Virginia, 24 miles. Very cool, man. I've seen this on the internet, so I've seen you uh, wheeling this thing. That is uh, another example of uh, one of those third row seat vehicles that I used to get stuffed in in the way back as a kid, but I probably would have flown out of that one. Hey, Kev, can you get a peek at all on what's happening over there at the Platinum Lot? Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah. It's beginning to look good like, like ignited. It is beginning to look a lot like ignited. As I kind of peer through the bleachers, I can see a lot of action, a lot of lights, a lot of people over there. A I lot see of a lot of smoke, Kev, so that's, that's a good sign. I do see a lot of smoke. 
Our friends from uh, full, throttle, uh, full Throttle Battery, high performance batteries with their UTV. Check them out at fullthrottlebattery.com. That's a cool little UTV. You know, the power sports segment continues to be a popular growing segment here. We've got the guys from JKS Manufacturing, Direct Off-Road. Thank you guys for coming out. Nice looking Jeep. You can find out more about Direct Off-Road right over there at the Platinum Lot. Another one of our off-road exhibitors. I can tell you there is a, a sea of humanity over there too. I'm seeing a lot of faces in the stands and, and a lot of people checking out all the cars over at Ignited. So that's definitely the go-to destination after the cruise comes by here. Well, I'm looking forward to getting over there myself, Kevin. You know, most of the time we're done with this event, I'm exhausted. And it was a long way to walk from where we were to the other side of the street. This year we make a couple of steps, we're right back in the heart of the action. Yeah, right on. A lot of nice looking F-250s, 350s, 450s made their way through the SEMA show. Our friends over at Wilmore Manufacturing having a good time at the SEMA show. Supporting their uh, Thunder tires. Yeah, and kind of a, a, an array of, of blue disco lights up on the roll cage there, pretty cool. So look on the back of this uh, Chevy pickup, Kev, and tell me that you and I would not have the time of our life on that snow bike. Yeah, uh, we, we would have the time of our life, but probably not for very long. Well, it would, it would be the day. It would be awesome. It would be awesome. And then when, once we woke up from our concussion, we could dream of this next Yeah, this thing's cool. Little set up here with the snowmobile, snowmobiles on tracks. Yeah. Those would definitely kill us. Yeah, giant Kelderman suspension with the track system, drive system on all four wheels. That, this type of vehicle is crucial when you really, really got to get to your snowmobiling destination. Because Any Vega can. fans out there? Now, I knew that the, the Vega, particularly the Cosworth, but I gotta tell you what, I've never seen a Vega like this. Have you, Kevin? You know, this looks like an IMSA uh, racing Vega from the from the late 70s with the wide body kit and the flares. But you're right, this one is hot. I like this. Uh, I believe this was a, uh, a Murray Path design, right? Uh, the asymmetric stripe. It's a great looking car. You know what's interesting about the Vega, Joe, is the way they transported those cars to the dealers from the Chevrolet manufacturing plant when they were new. Tell they had specially that. built train cars and they stood the car up on end in rows. So all of the original fluid containment systems were designed to be stood straight up. And then, you know why that wing was the height that it was? Uh... Now think, that was designed for the Daytona Super Speedway to go 200 miles an hour in 1969. Aerodynamics was everything, so why do you think the wing was the height that it was? Kev, I don't know, tell me. It was to clear the trunk when you opened the trunk lid. <laughs> no kidding. Because you still, didn't you have to be able to buy that car at the dealer if in fact it ran at the track? You know, for example. Yes. I, the, I, but I had no idea that the height was over the truck, which makes perfect sense. Yeah. In so an imperfect world. The word is uh, homologation. So in order to be legal in NASCAR competition, they had to make 500 versions for the street. So back then, dealers and consumers didn't understand why it was cool, and most of those things sat on dealer lots forever. And the toughest one to sell, even if it was 500, was that Laguna model. Oh, yeah. Well, they keep on coming here, Kev, although I do think we're starting to see a little bit of uh, the end of the light in the tunnel. You think so? No, not for a minute. <laughs> What's happening, guy? You know, over the years, Kev, people will call you out. I'm just yeah. not sure if it's somebody who wants to hug me or beat me up. Hey, sounds like an eagle song. That's why I got a fence between. How you doing, man? It definitely looks like Ignited is igniting over there, and especially as more of our uh, lifted trucks with all the LEDs make their way. Uh, they won't actually need the lights over there because they've got it all lit up, but it's, a lot of these things sure look cool coming through here.
the satin white Ford F-250 here has got a uh, mariachi band turned up to 11 inside, providing some entertainment. Got the orange cart, be lining through, look out for those guys. Got a chance to see, you know I make friends along the road and make a few enemies along the road. Good to see you Everett, thank you brother. Got some cool power sports representation here, a little Can-Am action, a little Polaris. Hey, Kev, I heard that Polaris sold more UTVs than Ford sold pickup trucks last year. Are you kidding me? I'm not. Wow, that's incredible. Right now, Joe, up to me, it's an MGB GT that is uh, built to the hilt. Yeah, that looks nice. That would be the one, and that is not the original 1275cc four-cylinder that came in those things with the uh, twin SU carburetors. That thing is a bad machine. Most of the ones I've seen are green. Yeah, British racing, perhaps. Another good-looking Bronco. My buddy George has a couple of them. I got to tell you, he sold it to, um, I don't know, one of these actors. And he, he wishes he had it, sold that Bronco. They're just so damn cool, you know, Kev? They are cool, and they're a lot of fun. We uh, we recently uh, uh, had a 72 Bronco in our shop that we put a 5.0 Coyote motor in and a five-speed manual, and I'll tell you, that thing is reliable, and it's fast, and it's fun to drive. What's happening, like guys? Another good-looking Mustang out of Nevada. Sports some good HRE wheels. I think we've seen over a hundred Mustangs so far. Oh, I bet you would. You know, it's a very popular car and a great canvas to build a custom for the SEMA show. You know, it's interesting, Kev, not a lot of Fox bodies, despite the fact that they made such a big impression on the industry, they, that power plant, that 5.0, became legendary, but you just don't see many Fox bodies. You are correct, but I'll tell you what, that's gonna change, because those cars are getting more popular every day. Well, you know, I won one in 1987, when they first came out. Oh, right on. What color, black, GT? I got red, and red. I sold it to Scott Timberlake, who came in second place. Timberlake? I haven't heard that name in a long time. Oh, uh, Kev, right now, and folks, fans, uh, for your attention, this is some of the cool vehicles from Hot Wheels. Yeah, so we got a great treat for everybody that's down here on the south end of the stands. This year is the 50th anniversary of Hot Wheels. And to celebrate, Hot Wheels brought out 15 different vehicles that were uh, in competition to be chosen in the Hot Wheels Legends competition in which one of the 15 would be made into an actual Hot Wheels car. So these are some of the cars that Hot Wheels brought out, including the modern version of the Deora here with the surfboards and the cab over pickup truck design. Let's well, check out this El Camino, Kev. Turbines in the back. Nice. It's a great looking GTO coming through here too. I'm not sure what all that stuff is in the bed of the GTO, but it, or the bed of the El Camino here, but it sure looks cool. Hot Wheels 50th branded Camaro coming through. This is a Copo. This is a race car. It's really good. That's what it does. Just as a reminder, folks, just due to the traffic here, we just can't have folks taking their way into the uh, area here. So unless you're a credential approved media, you cannot be in this area. You know, it's funny, they say uh, many people's most expensive hobby started with a 99 cent Hot Wheels car. 
Earlier this week at the SEMA show, I had the pleasure of interviewing the head of Hot Wheels. There's a guy who's got a title that is the global head of Hot Wheels. And he pointed out that, you know, you were talking about how many of those side-by-sides Polaris sold. The Hot Wheels car company, they look at it as an actual car company. They've got a design staff, they've got manufacturing, they study market trends on colors and what people want. It's just their car is only two and a half inches long. Kevin, I don't know if I'm going to say this with pleasure or with sadness, but I do believe that we're getting towards, well, and they do say they saved the best for last. Yeah, well, I think so. This is uh, our friend Rodney and, and Susie in this little Rambler wagon coming up now. Let's, let's kind of walk and talk. I understand that Jay Leno took this thing for a cruise today. He was driving all over the track over at uh, Speed Vegas. He was in love with it, and then he came back down and bought one of the Hot Wheels cars. That is too cool. This is a, uh, have fun guys, this is a, a road course Rambler wagon. That is something you're not going to see every day either, but it's here at SEMA, kids. Kev, I got to tell you that we're down to our last six vehicles. Holy smokes. Yes, holy Never smokes and everything else. Great looking patina 57 Chevy. I would be remiss to not think as we come to a close here with the SEMA Cruise and the kickoff of SEMA Ignited to thank our sponsors, RBP, Mother, Shell, Kia, Anzo Performance Lighting, and Hot Wheels celebrating their 50th. This gentleman in the Buggy Whips UTV will circle the end of the SEMA Cruise. And this is going to bring a wrap to the SEMA Cruise 2018. Thank you, everybody, and good night. Well, as I say, it's a wrap.